Okay, welcome back to Ask a Science Gaming, where we combine mediocre gameplay with expert level science. I am your now two-time host of this episode uh, on graduate studies. My name is Justin Kenimer. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry at Florida State University. Briefly, my research is on polymer chemistry, so I like to take a lot of small molecules and make them into big molecules. <laughs> and basically everything that you're probably looking at or touching right now is considered an organic material, so that would be a polymer of some sort. If you're wearing clothes, those are polymers. If you're not wearing clothes, well, your skin is also a polymer. So enough about me and what I love. I'm gonna introduce now the, the founder of Ask a Science Gaming, now the, the guest for today's episode, uh, Professor Ken Hansen. Justin, feel free to introduce yourself. Justin, thank you for the intro. Uh, yeah, it's a pleasure to be here as a guest rather than the host. Uh, I'm Ken Hansen, Associate Professor in the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry at Florida State University. I'm a photochemist slash photophysicist, which means photons are my hammer and every single problem is a nail. And so I use photon energy to uh, move electrons, move protons, make and break bonds, do uh, photomechanical polymers, which Justin and I actually have a paper together on where you use photons to drive mechanical processes. Um, but more importantly, in joining why I'm joining you tonight, is good because I am the chair of the FSU Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry graduate admissions. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm um, basically in charge of the committee where we make decisions about who should be admitted to the program and who should um, be accepted and who should get fellowships. And Justin is actually the former chair of that committee. And so you have double chair duty tonight to answer questions that anyone might have. Um, and yeah, so that's a special theme for the night. If you guys have any questions related to it, we're going to do it while we play video games. Yes, and on that note, Ken, what new game are we starting with tonight? So unlike most of our games where we go retro, today we're doing a new one, which is Super Mario Brothers Wonder. And so this is a new one released on the Switch. It came out, I think, October 20th was the release date. And I've intentionally been avoiding all like Twitch streams and YouTube videos, and I'm playing this entirely blind. And so, yeah, <laughs> let's get into some Super Mario Brothers Wonder. Excellent. I mean, it's has it been a while since a new, completely new Super Mario has come out? The last one was, oh man, who would know this? What was the one, the 3D Mario? So I've uh, Mario Maker 2 is probably the last 2D platformer, and that came out five years ago. Okay. And so there's been a couple 3D ones since then. But Great. Well, welcome to everybody that's in the audience. If you don't know how this works, we're just going to sit here and uh, play video games and chat and uh we have a message board so welcome to any new people welcome back to regular ask a science gaming uh uh attendees and feel free to start posting questions in the chat i'm going to moderate those questions and try to get to them as soon as possible um and we'll we'll go from there um and so i think typical for this type of episode is maybe we start with a brief breakdown once you get up and running here of 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 the over review of, of graduate admissions um, well, so Gohaku says our, our stream is lagging behind quite a bit. So we'll oh, have, let me check okay. this quick. Oh, it's, a little huh. bit, it's a little bit behind. I I apologize, everyone. I don't know what happened there, but we are back, and it seems like the stream is actually working. So, Justin, you can take okay. over on that. Welcome back. A few def technical difficulties, not an issue. Um, all right. So, hello, everybody. Uh, Welcome back. I'm going to start scrolling through the uh, chat box here. Um, and while I do that, uh, do we want to maybe start with just a general overview of the graduate admissions process from maybe our side of it and what they can expect? Yeah, so your guys' end, you basically apply for graduate programs. So sometime in the fall semester, you're going to start looking into various different schools. And uh, schools have different requirements, but I think generally across the board, they're relatively similar. Basically, there's going to be a deadline sometime in December, uh, usually either early December or mid-December. Ooh, Fire Mario, that's fun. <laughs> and then part of that application process, you're going to do a cover letter that says, I love science and I want to join your program and here's who I want to work for. Um, you're also going to have other things like... Uh, letters of recommendation, those are key. You need three letters of recommendation. You're going to have a resume. You'll have to give a transcript. Um, I think that's mostly everything that you'll need for pretty much any program. Um, 
But yeah, you're going to submit that information. You're going to get your letters of recommendation and submitted directly from your advisor. And then it's going to go to some kind of decision committee. And so that's uh, that's the committee that Justin and I were both chairs of. It's called the uh, GRAC at FSU. It's a uh, graduate um, admissions and recruiting committee. And that committee is going to get together and they're going to look at applications. And so last year, I think we got, what, 300? Something like that. Right. So between domestic and international, we end up with... Uh, quite a few applications and we're going to sort through those and make decisions about who should get into the program and so our application deadline at fsu is uh, december 15th we are going to start looking at domestic applications almost immediately after that and so we try to make our first round of decisions before the holiday break actually so if you get admitted to the program as a domestic student i mean and you get your stuff in on time you might actually hear back from us and we like december 20th we get yeah, on it pretty early the holidays so. yeah, yeah we try to get that worm in your brain before you get home I see uh, exclamation point drink. Does that count as take a drink? It does take a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down Bronco has requested a drink, so cheers. Calm down Bronco. Welcome back. It's been a while, yes. former FSU student. I, re I remember Calm down Bronco from the last time I did this. Uh, All right, we're going to stop streaming. We'll be back in about 10 seconds. And we're going to try Super Mario Wonder again. Yeah, let's do that. Do we, do we have... Lori in the audience? No, she okay. actually unfortunately can't be here tonight. So, okay. um, so with some of the logistics, um, I do not want to give you a false answer. Oh, there has been a question about whether or not an unofficial transcript is allowed for review. My guess is that unofficial transcripts can come in many forms. Uh, there might be some level of qualification that has to be met if it's not official but i do believe that you can't officially move forward with going to grad school at that department until the university gets an official transcript so at some point you're going to have to uh, submit the official transcript from from your um under or your bachelor's degree university um so i would recommend getting on the ball with with getting that started anyway um and just like our website and most websites, uh, you should be able to find an email address or a contact address with questions specifically like that. You can say, here's my unofficial transcript. Will this satisfy the decision requirements while I work to obtain the official transcript? And you should hear back within a few days uh, whether or not that is acceptable. Okay, so uh, FSU does not have a hockey team, but we do have a circus. <laughs> and that is a true story. We actually have a circus at FSU, and they are actually really good. Um, so no hockey. The ice would not last long, I don't think. <laughs> There's not a hockey rink within, like, two-hour drive of Tallahassee. So if you're a hockey fan and want to play hockey. But a uh, fun story about that. So when I got to, I, w I grew up in Minnesota, right? And I went to grad school in Los Angeles. And so uh, University of Southern California had a club hockey team. And like one of my friends was on it and he was like, oh, you should come see a game. And I'm like, all right, we'll see how it goes. And it was not great. <laughs> Turns out when you grow up, next to like five hockey ranks even if you're not a you know college level player you still play a lot of hockey and i'm kind of speed running this which is tragic because yeah. i don't know what this is so you're an elephant that's new <laughs> yeah that's a new new characteristic of uh this version of mario it's very yeah. destructive we, we have a very healthy athletic program at fsu um most sports that you can think of that are played in either indoor or warm weather uh certainly it is 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 there um, yeah strengths wise i mean football we're what number four yeah we're ranked four in football and we're yeah. per perennially good in, in women's soccer and women or football depending on what country you're in uh and then uh, women's softball is perennially good baseball is pretty good baseball is Lori's good. a fan of that yeah um uh it's a lot of fun uh, and also, if you're a graduate student, there's plenty of intramural uh, activities, intramural sports. I know a lot of my students for a while were on the uh, Ultimate Frisbee intramural teams, oh, and fun. that was a good way for them to go get some exercise out of the lab. And, Oof, look at that. Uh, wow. Yeah, these graphics have come a long way. Yeah. <laughs> this is not your, not your uh, millennials, Mario. Castle Bowser. He's the size of a castle now. Great. Mm. <laughs> Sorry if anyone's hoping to get lore out of this. We're just going through the games. So Cuddle Puppy has volunteered to be one of the lions in the circuit. 
<laughs> uh, they don't that. have any actual animals in the circus. They, yeah. they, uh, that, that is, you know, now more of a controversial thing to have at a circus. But if you want to dress up as a lion, I'm sure they need lions now. Um, so <laughs> please, please do do uh, apply. <laughs> well, we will say about the circus, though, it's entirely student run. So like all the financial stuff, the business end, the ticketing, the, the, the organization of the event, the, the, I don't know, ringmaster. I mean, it's all students. It's all choreographed by them with a little bit of mentorship. Yeah. That's so, yeah. Uh, what games are available on campus? I climb mountains. Okay, well, we don't have any mountains, <laughs> but we do have indoor climbing facilities, yeah. not only on campus, but off campus. There's actually a couple off campus ones that are really nice. You know, the whole wall is like knobs that you can climb up and go up like two and a half stories if you want to so. so there's a really cool one do you know the old crappy theater that's by the chuck e cheese or what used to be a movie theater it's like the dollar theater or it had like it showed rocky horror at night that got taken over by the climbing club that used to be in railroad square huh. and so they took every single one of those theaters and covered the walls with climbing stuff wow so that's where the new climbing place is yeah it's, it's, it's so it's not in railroad square anymore. no no okay. they moved it and they took over and that was like five theaters right so there's like uh, like thousands and thousands of feet of climbing space in that area, which is pretty amazing. Yeah, one of our daughters had a birthday party there. Not not our kid, but it was uh, some other kid was hosting. I didn't even know that existed. So yeah, if you're into climbing, there is a pretty awesome climbing club at, at uh, in Tallahassee. That's a plug I'll give too. Is is Tallahassee's not too small, not too big. It has a little bit of everything, but not like LA everything where you're swamped. But uh, instead, you get you know opportunities to do things you like. Oh man, I should bust out another chat window here. So I'm scrolling up. There was a little bit of some messages missed. Um, if you did ask a question earlier on when we were having technical difficulties and we never got around to it, please feel free to just repost that question, and put it right back into the circulation, um, and then I'll, I'll I will see it. Um, otherwise, once again, uh, now that it looks like we've we've fixed some of the technical difficulties, this is Ask a Scientist Gaming. I'm your host, uh, Justin Kenimer, Associate Professor, with the creator, Ken Hansen, Associate Professor of Chemistry. Um, and we are here on a special uh, episode to help demystify the graduate school application process and potentially answer any questions you might have about grad school life, expectations for maybe the professor's side, um, and, uh, and life afterward, um, and what kind of opportunities you might have as a PhD student. So we are also hanging out yeah. and drinking and playing video games. Yes. So. <laughs> and, and we're, we're doing ca casual enjoyment for the evening. Yeah. Um, yeah, we eight thirty two. We should probably throw a prediction up there. All right. Which one do you want to do? Test. It's, it's right over here. Okay. So those that are new or unfamiliar, we're going to throw up what's called a prediction. It's just basically like a uh, guest vote, like a game show. Um, I'm going to put a question up here in a few seconds. Um, and then you guys will choose uh, the answer you, that you think is correct. Um, and you can tell them how it works with the points and all. Yeah. So usually on Twitch, people do this for gaming related things. Well, can beat this level in under a certain amount of time or something like that. Um, but on this stream, we do it related typically to the expertise of our, our, our scientist guest. But in this case, we're going to have it related to admissions to Justin and I and our experience in the admissions process. And so, yeah, we're going to pop up a question there and you guys can do your predictions. If you look at uh, as soon as Justin presses go on this and yeah, let's set that to two minutes. It's all, yep, all I will do that. On that. And then I probably could have typed this in faster than copy paste. <laughs> no worries. We're making it up as we go, ladies and gentlemen. I'm skipping all the lore. So, you, I don't Too know many. if you're familiar with this game, Justin, but we are no longer in the Mushroom Kingdom. Now we are in the Flower Kingdom. Okay. So that's where that's where we're playing. In did this you world. did you beat Bowser's Castle? Mm -hmm. Nope, I haven't gotten to a castle yet. Okay. Oh, look at this open world, too. I get to pick my level. All right, Ken, look at this real quick. Make sure it looks right. It looks two minutes. We got two answers and yep. then the question. All right, here it comes. All right, so if you guys look on the top of your chat, you'll see a predict button. Click that predict button and it'll allow you to answer this question. And the question is the total number of R1 institutions in the United States. I think this was as of... Actually, 2022 is the latest report on this one. So the question is, how many R1 institutions? And R1 in this case is defined as 20, re 20 research or scholarship doctoral degrees and at least $50 million in research expenditures in a given year. And so that is what we define as 
an R1, well not we, just generally it's defined as an R1 institution. So the question is, how many R1 institutions exist in the United States? Right, and, and for calibration, FSU is an R1 university. Um, uh, and so, again, that's that's metric by how many, um, how, how much research we do, basically. Yeah, uh, how, how many broadly, dollars? Broadly defined. How many PhDs, yeah. yep. Um, Okay, so we've got. Well, oh, the numbers are rolling in. We, oh, we, look at that! Uh, we have a. Uh, we certainly have a, a favorite. Are they allowed to see the percentages? No, not yet. Around? Okay. Nope, they won't. Okay. I guess they'll see the numbers. Uh, the the number of people that vote one way or another. But yeah, with Twitch, if you guys aren't familiar, these predictions, they're they're not just like who's right and who's wrong, but it's how much uh, imaginary internet units you point to towards it. And so if you're really confident, do more of them, you'll get more of a return. If you're not so confident, do less of them. Uh, you guys have about 20 seconds left. Um, and yeah, you're on Ask a Scientist Gaming Honor Code, so you cannot look this up on Google or chat <laughs> GPT. Cheaters, <laughs> cheaters of a lot of you. We can't double check, but yeah. It's like Final Jeopardy. You you wager your confidence. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Final Jeopardy. I've never used that analogy on a stream. Thank you for that. That's uh Oh no, I lost my elephant. How are you feeling about this game? This is beautiful. I mean I think it looks great. Yeah. It, pl I, um, it plays like new Super Mario Brothers. Then you have a hat. I feel like I'm a bit lost though, because I'm still in the realm where like Mario does not turn into an elephant. It just gets bigger or smaller. This is or this throws is too much. a fire. What what about elephant mode is like special? Can so he like he can, belly flop on people? He can hit and he can like destroy things. Well, that makes sense. I'm assuming this hurts them. Yeah, look at that. Okay, so the trunk slap. Got it. Oh man, these poor hippos. Okay. I think that's two minutes. Am I right? Yep, that's done. Okay, so is it showing automatically or do I... Yeah, so you'll click choose outcome. Okay. And the answer is less than 150. Less than 150 R1 institutions in the United States as of 2022. So congratulations to those that selected less than 150. Um, yeah, there are there are a lot of institutions in the United States, certainly greater than 150. Um, however, being categorized again as a research one university, you have to meet a certain level of metrics for that, and um, uh, we are proud to be in that category. Yeah, uh, yeah. Now it means we get to do research at a pretty high level. We get really nice instrument facilities. We have money to do what we want to do. Yeah, the five million in total research expenditures. I think our department does. I mean, we got to be what twenty million, something like that. Yeah, and that's just a department. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so we have like an entire College of Arts and Sciences and different colleges, all with graduate programs that all contribute to that totalitarian value, right? So, um, okay, so uh, I'm gonna get this wrong. Fate, meha. <laughs> We'll just say fate. Fate, uh, I have a TOEFL score of 105. Speaking 19 to boost my speaking, I decided to take it again on the 14th of November. I'm stressed because it might make um, the miss the deadline because it takes one week for the answers to come back. Oh, interesting. Um, if, they, if they apply and use their original exam score, and then they take the exam again, but the score for that second take doesn't come back until after the November 14th deadline. Are they able to change it? I think it updates. Okay. Like when, when Lori extracts that information, I think it'll update when you update your score. Okay. Because some people do that with their GPAs because your GPA probably doesn't come up, come back till after the deadline. So yeah, I don't think that's that unusual. I mean, with that said, as long as you're over the, the university standards, I mean, that's usually, I won't say good enough, but that's that's at least enough to get your application looked at in a thorough way. Love that sound. So FSU total research expenditures, is that what you looked up? Yeah, well, so, um, right. Gohaku 
has asked how much government funding does FSU get annually? And so government might actually be a hard number to locate because we do get funding from various uh, methodologies where there's obviously the government, but some people get funding through industry related collaborations, um, through awards and other things. Um, but just typing into the Office of Research at FSU, um, the, they spent a total of $329 million in research expenditures, um, uh, which includes federal, state, and other funding resources. So these are all, the, all of this expenditure is done by PIs and research uh, groups and um, institutions within the university towards uh, research. So a pretty hefty amount of money, yeah. 300 and almost $330 million. Um, uh, so that's, that's a lot. Yeah. A surprising amount. Yeah. If you can move this to the front and I can watch some chat. Yes. Yeah. You just, yeah. That'd I be got you. It. I got you. <laughs> so I tried to hide, hijack it while you were doing We actually have two mice hooked up to this computer so both Justin and I can control it and we're competing. <laughs> it's like uh, our, uh it's like when you're doing the uh the the student driver where there's a brake on both sides of the car. <laughs> <laughs> I am good at the analogies today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's student good. driver. Yeah. It's my thing. Uh okay. So hopefully that answered your question uh, about government funding annually at FSU. Um, uh, Cuddle Puppy's native language is dog. Does Cuddle Puppy need to take a TOEFL? <laughs> yes, you'll have to apply. Actually, no, if you're, if you are educated in an American system, including American dog schools, I don't think you need a TOEFL. Yeah. Uh, in fact, there's a lot of, uh, students that come from Africa where their primary language of their institution is English. And so, yeah, they don't have to do TOEFLs. Actually, that, <laughs> Not a serious question, but that's important. A, that's a really good point, too. So, uh, again, on the international application websites, there's likely going to be maybe um, some some uh, exceptions to the TOEFL uh, requirement. And, and Ken just, just nailed one of them. If, if the native language of your country is English, and, and you learn your classes in English, and you speak English to get your bachelor's degree uh, primarily, uh, that could qualify you to bypass the TOEFL requirement. Um, and so these are all great questions to ask the administrator of admissions uh, when you're applying uh, from, from, from your respective uh, country. Just want to interrupt with, we got some roller skating Koopas here. <laughs> I don't know if you saw this. Roller skating uphill is legit. That is not <laughs> no, true. Uh, Oh, it's blade. We got rip cords now and everything. Yeah. Oh, I don't know what's going on here. You just went into trippy mode. I did. Oh, what? wall jumps. That's fun. Oh. Is this still Mario or is this Luigi? This is still Mario. Oh. I got Fire Mario going. So you can I... use your hat as a parachute now. Yeah. It's like the tail in Mario 3. Yeah, yeah the fox tail. Yep. And now you're speaking my language. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, reading about FSU alumni and professors, did you get to study under Harry Croto? Uh, we did not. We were colleagues with Harry Croto. You remember that photo we had at his house? It was like our like first and second year. I do. Yeah, that's pretty spectacular. I'm just wondering if I could actually access that photo for the screen in a... I don't think I can. Um, I'm trying to think if there's like a website I could go to to see it and then put it on the, but I don't, I don't have it. Um, but yeah, yeah. Harry was uh, a member of our department for two or three years when you and I first started. One extra year for you. Yeah. Um, and and he was around quite a bit. You could always find him and have coffee with him. He was a really nice guy and a great colleague. And uh, he is missed. Um, so yes, we did have the the pleasure of, of overlapping with him briefly during our early years here. Um, but not I did not get to study under him, but I got to hear a lot of stories and those are like solid gold that I can, can take with me. Uh, so go up. Salem had a question about choosing an advisor. Yep, I'm looking at that one right now. Okay. Uh, so Salem, the, the question was, how do I choose a supervisor? Um, and then 
how do I get this pin out of the way? How do I choose? Oh, uh, you can go over here. Oh, okay. Be easier. How do I choose a supervisor when and before after the start of the first semester? Great question. Um, Ken, you want to? Yeah, so at FSU, we do uh, something called rotations. So if you go in, I'm trying to do a shell jump. I don't know if I can. Oh, there you go. Anyway, so at FSU, we have a, a particular strategy about this is that when you're admitted to FSU, you're admitted FSU chemistry, at least you're admitted to the chemistry department and not to a particular research group. And so we do something called rotations or basically in the fall semester, your first semester in the program in August, you'll do orientation plus a whole bunch of um, you'll sit through a bunch of presentations from all sorts of different faculty. And then on top of that, um, what we'll have is a rotation sheet, which basically says you first need to meet with four faculty. So schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting, just to have a conversation about, you know, what your research is about and then decide if you want to do a rotation and a rotation can vary dramatically depending on what group you're in. Um, there's different strategies to do it, but the idea is to get actual time in the lab and time interacting with students and the professor, um, to get a feel for what's going on in their lab. And so ultimately, after that period of time, so the deadlines are like August, you see all the uh, presentations, September, you meet with faculty, October, you do those rotations and the end of October, you list your priority research groups. And then the faculty ultimately decide, you know, who joins what group. Uh, we looked at the numbers. It's basically 95% of students get their top choice over the last five years, which is pretty good. Yeah. Yes. And, and I, you know, I get a lot of emails. Um, because I know that graduate school likely works differently uh, in different countries and everything. But I, I do get a lot of emails where people, they want to have an answer as to whether or not they can come work specifically in my research group ahead of the actual application deadline. And my answer has to be, you know, kind of vanilla to that question. I mean, my answer is yes, we are always looking for enthusiastic new members to join my group, so Ken's group, and, and, and pretty much anybody in, in our faculty are looking for new members to join their group. Um, but the proper protocol and procedure for our department and for a lot of departments is that you first must apply to the program and be accepted, broadly defined, into the graduate program. And then at that point, you begin the process when you get here of identifying and looking for a research no. group to join. Oh, that was um, close. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, I almost yeah. died. <laughs> top of the poll, though. Do yeah. you still get bonuses for that? I, I don't know how lives work in this. I haven't died yet. And so, so yeah, so it's good that you're interested in finding and looking through the website and finding research at different universities that you would see yourself working in. Is it 100% guaranteed that if you apply to a department that you will work with only one specific chosen advisor? Um, no, that's not guaranteed. Uh, but uh, at the same time, there might be a lot of research at the, at the department that you aren't giving enough credit to that you might really turn out to like a lot and maybe change your mind once you get to grad school. So um, piggybacking on that, one piece of advice I give for every student that's applying for graduate school, try to go somewhere where you're going to have at least, you know, two people that you'd be willing to work for. Cause for whatever reason, you might not get your top choice, whether they can't take students, they, they move universities they're whatever reason they can't take as many as they'd like to, or, I mean, maybe you don't like them, right? You have your heart set based on what a web page says, and that web page doesn't reflect the actual experience in any given research group. And so you want to have a backup plan no matter what. And so I strongly recommend finding a university where you'd be excited and willing to work for it least a couple people all right what is the best way to go about applying for undergraduate research is it annoying to professors to receive emails from students they don't know to ask for a research opportunity in their lab great question cadenza 343 <laughs> um uh yeah so ken want you why don't you start off? I mean, I guess everyone so, might be a little so, different. But. So it's it's never annoying. Well, that's not true. Sometimes it is annoying. <laughs> and the reason is sometimes we get generic emails that say, dear professor, I want to work for you. Can I 
signed whoever, yeah. right? The, the emails we want is, hey, Dr. Hansen, I was looking at your webpage. I'm particularly interested in photochemistry. I'm a second year, I'm a sophomore. I've taken these classes. I'm really interested in going to grad school. Uh, attached is my CV, attached is my transcript. Like those are the students that are serious and the ones that I actually want to talk to. And so the generic ones are a little bit annoying because like I can't evaluate anything. Yeah. I know nothing about you. Uh, what am I doing here? I mean, that email is a first date. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. And and we we do get plenty of emails from undergrads that want to do research. And, um, you know, it has to be said that some undergrads are just looking for a line on their CV for their med school application. They're not really interested in specifically the research. They're interested in getting that line on their CV. And, you know, that is just part of it. Um, and so when we get an email like that, if it comes across low bar and generic, we might assume that that's, that's really what the undergrad is looking for is a low bar line on their CV. Uh, I have gotten fantastic emails from, from undergraduates interested in research uh, and, and, and I paid attention because of the effort that was put into those emails. So, yeah. And even, even if your email is perfect, even if your interest aligns, sometimes we just don't have space right we we have uh, so many undergrads already and we can't take additional undergrads and so don't take it personally i mean the reality is you're probably oh, look at this a built-in speed run in the game it's kind of fun um but yeah don't take those rejections personally because it very rarely has anything to do with you and everything to do with just that's the coincidence of the time uh not ideal timing or not enough room in the lab it's just kind of the nature of the beast and it's a war of attrition you reach out to a lot of people and you hope you know some of them respond some of them won't at all but so it goes yeah. exactly i'm at i mean i'm at capacity with undergrads right now yeah. um there's a safety issue because we do synthesis a lot of synthesis and and uh you know having too many uh, people in the lab uh, is just too much no. congestion and a safety issue so um you know don't exactly look at that, that I can if you email a professor and they simply just don't have the capacity to take on new students at this time um you know don't don't feel let down uh that it was your email that was the issue sometimes it's just that reason I, I will say that for my research a lot of times when i am looking or accepting new undergraduate students into my lab it typically comes at the beginning of summer because i will have undergrads that graduate in the spring and therefore some spots typically open up in my lab in the summer and going into the next fall and so if you're really proactive about it and you reach out to a professor sometime in early summer or maybe late spring um, with interest in the research there might be a better uh, opportunity to get into one that's typically um, you know at capacity okay so i think we Hopefully answered that question. Yeah, I think that. Um, so, Fate, uh, one of your faculty members said that if you mentioned that person's name as a potential supervisor in your application, is it is positive impact on the application process. Um, well, it doesn't affect me too much uh i don't know i don't know what the there might be some other context to that uh we the job of the graduate admissions committee is to ad admit the, the best students into our program not to admit students for specific people um and so we we and many times try to avoid encouraging any sort of favoritism or whatever to put down a specific person's name to try and gain leverage in the application process. Um, it is certainly not guaranteed at all uh, to be a way to get a, a leg up in the admissions process. Yeah, and that, that reiterates, like at FSU, we don't admit people to groups. We don't admit you to particular flavors of science. Um, you're admitted to the program and we decide from there. Uh, with that said, like we partition how we evaluate applications based on area. Like we'll have six different people on the committee and it's somewhat arbitrary to make decisions that way. I love ghost Goombas, by the way, this is my new favorite thing. <laughs> but yeah, we, we do partition by area just so we can look at different applications. And so if you're an analytical chemist, chances are you want to be evaluated by an analytical chemist. That'll be, you know, your best bet to get a fair, Oof, I just died for the first time. 
No. Oh. For the first time, mm -hmm. rage. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you should put a, a list of faculty that you're potentially interested in there. One, it shows, you know, what area you're in. And then two, it shows you've done your homework on FSU. It's not just some like generic application you're, you're sending to every single university, right? You're actually serious about our program and that, that reflects well. What kind of costume are these guys wearing? Okay. Um... We have some more uh, about the TOEFL. Um, wish they would move away from the TOEFL. So do understand the, the, the purpose of the TOEFL and the importance of the TOEFL is because as a graduate student, when you join the program, you're required to be a teaching assistant, which means you are actively engaging with tuition paying undergraduate students at FSU and being a teacher for them in quite a difficult subject usually of chemistry, uh, one of the organic or gen chem or one of those. And so the university really takes that seriously as they should and one of the ways that they um, ensure that you're able to effectively communicate to the tuition paying students is through an aptitude exam like the TOEFL. And so it's it's not like a GRE where we're trying to, you know, Ken can go on about the GRE. Yeah. Um, and he will. Yeah, and, and he will. And so you can put a question about, hey, Ken, tell me about the GRE in the chat. And uh, there you go. Um, but the TOEFL does have a, a little bit more purpose in that regard. Um, so uh, that will. But to follow up on that, we don't just accept the TOEFL. We also have like Duolingo is a new one, uh, the eyelets test. If you go to FSU's, what, what the heck is this? Super Super Mario. Look at that guy. Holy moly. <laughs> oh, smash! What to do with this? That guy's just getting bombarded with fire. I think you. Uh oh, oh all you, right. You made him mad. I did. I deserve all this. <laughs> so the wall slide looks like it's got a bit of an upgrade. Yeah. With a wall grab or. Yeah, yeah. The wall walking is pretty, pretty fun in this. Oh my god. Uh oh. You get a little bit of sail. Oh. Ah. Yeah. I would have been too intimidated to jump on. Oh, still classic Mario. You can still crush him. Oh, yeah. man. Good. Kylie uh, requested a factoid. Um, man, one of my favorite factoids, uh, science related, not uh, graduate admissions related, but. Um, the, 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 the person who came up with the Haber-Bosch process, this is Fritz Haber who met up with Carl Bosch, and Carl Bosch was the chemical engineer that scaled it up. But Fritz Haber, he is basically uh, responsible for half the life on Earth, which is kind of crazy, well, at least human life on Earth. He was, he was a person that um, came up with this process to generate ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen, and ammonia is really, really important for things like fertilizer. And so if you can't make enough crops, you can't feed people, there's not enough people on Earth. And so Fritz Haber came up up with this uh, catalyst that basically facilitated this reaction, generated ammonia, met up with Carl Bosch, and it took them like less than five years to go from like milligram scale to like ton scale. And so now half the world's population, basically the nitrogen, half the nitrogen in your body came from uh, Fritz Haber and his process. Other fun piggybacked factoid on that is he's also the father of modern chemical warfare. So you win some, you lose some with Fritz. Anyway, I've been uh, I, I've been given props on my uh, emotes usage. <laughs> You're much more on top of it than I am when I uh, I look. I did the Bowser screen. good game when you beat that dude. That's perfect. On point. Yeah. No, you're on it. Kylie, welcome to the stream. First time chat. Thank you for joining us. You should click the follow button. In fact, if any of you guys are new to the stream, click the follow button. It helps with our visibility. You also get notifications about future streams. We only stream about every other Wednesday night, so you won't get many uh, notifications. But if you want to know which guest is coming up, um, yeah, click the follow button right now. <laughs> well, look at that. Welcome, Kyle. So, um... Yeah, keep the questions coming. Maybe uh, should we do another prediction? Interactions are always always fun. <laughs> Go Haku. I do not have a command for host, but the host today is Justin Kenimura, an associate professor in our department, a polymer chemist. <laughs> so sorry for lacking the command on host. Yeah, so Salem, we 
A given cohort in the fall is typically between 30 and 40 students in a normal in a normal year. Is that about right? Yeah, and I think yeah. we have about like 150 to 160 grad students total. So that's that's pretty much our size. We're classified as a large university. I didn't realize that according to ACS. Okay. We're a large PhD program. We're on the bottom end of large. Yeah, so 30 or 40, I think, is what we try to get. Yeah. Um, and that's, if you divide that number by the number of active faculty, it comes out to be like 1.3 students per faculty member. But, you know, not all faculty members take a student every year. And, um, you know, it's enough to make sure that everyone can get one if, if that's if that's the goal. Right. So go Haku. Justin's also from Minnesota. I am not. I am from Virginia. Um, but I did a postdoc at Minnesota, so the University of Minnesota in Minneapolis. So I, I am familiar with frostbite, and, and <laughs> uh, I actually really enjoyed the several years I spent in uh, Minneapolis. It's a very charming city. So, uh, what is the universe made of? Ken, Ooh. this one's you. <laughs> Protons, neutrons, and electrons. No, empty I space. Guess bosons. <laughs> Hard question, though. That is that would be above our pay grade. Cuddle puppy matter? No, there's also antimatter, and there's yeah dark dark matter. matter. Yeah. And yeah, no, we need. We've had a couple astrophysicists on <laughs> David Collins and uh, Maya Mitchell, Maya Murphy. Sorry, man, that's a that is a deep question, yeah. but an important one and above our pay grade as lowly chemists. We care about protons, neutrons, and electrons, and mostly electrons and how those behave and how they're attached to protons and neutrons my universe is made of hopes and dreams <laughs> and discipline uh, yeah <laughs> the state of delusion <laughs> nihilism <laughs> there we go cuddle puppy on point <laughs> Fill up. Fill up the universe oh uh, uh, man i'm glad this the video quality is back that yeah. sucked yeah we're, that we're felt back. really bad we've rebounded yeah we did our best how did life begin? Oh, we talked about Scott Stagg was on uh, about a month ago. And so we talked about the uh, the RNA hypothesis of life. Like you make this sequence of RNA, which is basically these amino acid chains that you put together. And if they can self-replicate by some means, all of a sudden you have life. The the thing I didn't appreciate, and, and the guest, uh, Steve Leonard, you probably interacted with Steve a little I bit. I did. I had lunch with him. His, his, his big point, and I didn't appreciate this until I talked to him, is that like DNA is important, protein's important, but really we can make all that crap, right? We can synthesize most of it in the lab. The thing that makes life unique is compartmentalization, like partitioning those functions into different spaces, controlling the transport between them. And so that's really one of the hurdles we can't control in terms of generating artificial life. Which is, yeah, again, that's just not something you'd typically think about. Yeah. So artificial intelligence is, I don't know if that's the right word, right? It just it just uses all of the words that is already out there and yeah. compiles them in a way that makes it logistic. But it doesn't actually, yeah. you know, think like we do. Uh, are we, wow, Kyle is coming in. <laughs> yeah, no, coming exactly. In hot. Existential. Coming, what is the universe made of? How do life we're, begin? We're, we're just playing Mario and drinking alcohol here. Like, <laughs> but are, no, we're happy to discuss. That's are there fun. aliens? Well, yes. Almost 100% positive there is life somewhere else in the universe. Probably on this planet, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, an octopus is an alien. It has to be. <laughs> There's don't no reason. Started. <laughs> Except they share our DNA. That's why I don't eat octopi. I don't oh, eat Oh, man. I, I do not believe that they originally came from Earth. <laughs> Have you seen a special on octopi? No, that Justin is not a biologist. <laughs> no, they are. They're brilliant. The, They're terrifying. Yeah. They got ink, camouflage. They yeah. can move through any space that their beak can fit through. That's it. Oh, why do I keep going in this level? So if there's a hole in a wall that's just slightly bigger than the beak of an octopus, it can go right through that hole. Yeah. That's an alien in my opinion. <laughs> Uh, I like it. <laughs> what is Johnny Walker made of? Neutrons or protons? Oh man, neutrons, protons, and electrons. In fact, you know, two two carbons and oxygen and Deuteron. six hydrogen. That's your answer for uh, Johnny Walker. Plus a bunch of water. And flavor flavor packets. I don't know what those are made out of. 
Here's an interesting one. Is it actually viable for there to be a silica-based organism instead of carbon? Man, I've 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 read some interesting takes on this because it's one of those like let's let's fact check sci-fi and like could there be silicon-based life? Carbon is very unique in like one of the things you have to consider about life is you need a certain balance of bond strength and weakness. Like you need it to be. Oh God, I just got crushed by that guy. Oh, a swim level. Yeah, Sweet. it's classic. I don't know if there's anything special I'm missing here, but Whoa. um, but there's this this. You better hope you don't come across an octopi. <laughs> <laughs> no, keep an eye out for him. But yeah, you basically need this 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 balance between bonds that are weak enough that they're easy to form and break apart, um, but also strong enough that they don't fall apart automatically. And silicon doesn't necessarily fulfill a lot of those goals. Like, uh, if you get a silicon lattice, it's typically going to be really, really strong. But if you get a silicon silicon bond, it's not very strong, not even close to carbon. So I think it takes very special conditions. And water, I mean, that's the other one. Water solubility, that's huge. Yeah. Oh, wow, I got a little burst there. What makes us human? What makes us human, Ken? <laughs> Above my point, pay grade. At one point I was told we're humans because we learn how to use tools. Um, but tools. then they actually saw like other animals using tools, so that one got kind of broken. Yeah, well, that's what I love about the history of the sciences is, is we basically just knocked humans off their pedestal every single step of the way, right? We used to be, you know, the center of the universe. We used to be the only thing that thinks. We used to be the only thing that feels or uses tools or barters. But like primates can negotiate money, <laughs> like they can like you know buy and sell things. It's absolutely crazy. I can't be feelings. I mean, I have a dog that is very, very <laughs> More emotional. Human than us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that dog has a lot of feelings. It can't just be feelings. The use of tools. Crows use tools. They can solve problems, and you know, yeah. I mean, the least trade. the least adept to survive creature on the planet. That's what makes you human, right? We don't have, <laughs> we don't have claws. We don't have fangs. We don't have exoskeletons. Uh, we don't have any defense mechanism at all except for our brain. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, wow, I can do a, like, speed burst. Did you see that? Huh. Oh, look at that. Don't do that. So, there's been a request for a professor of epistemology. Ooh, man, I would love to have a philosophy professor on. Most of my guests, I actually get them via word of mouth. And so, yeah, if, if you know somebody, I will gladly reach out to them. And I send them a cold email that says, do you want to play video games and talk about your expertise? And they either say, hell no, or yes, or maybe, but eventually yes. So I'd be happy to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Can we get some people from MIT? I do not have the budget to fly people <laughs> in yet. If this stream ever takes off, I promise I will fly in guest experts. Yeah. But Hit right that now. follow button, yeah, everybody. Exactly. <laughs> no, hit that subscription bu button and, um, yeah, give about, you know, 300 uh, uh, um, uh, subscriptions for others, gift subscriptions for others, because, yeah. But, man, that'd be a lot of fun to, to make enough with this to fly people in. What is this? Can I open this? Are, are you allowed to, like, get money from companies if you advert? Like, let's say the screen behind us had, mm -hmm. like, a Adidas logo <laughs> would you is it possible for yeah. people to get sponsored like that on twitch no that's how most of the people on twitch make their money it's not through like the ads or the subscriptions but actually getting sponsored by people so yeah there, there's a lot of uh yeah a lot of sponsorship going on this stream brought to you by mario <laughs> <laughs> kidding they're not paying us anything nintendo i i don't know they're a weird company they don't support streamers but they don't get in the way either You've had guests from other universities, then, not just yeah. FSU. So, so, so whenever and and, and any time you have a guest come or uh, someone come to give a seminar, like mm -hmm. I'd be happy to host him. Like yeah, you had, you had Yon, yeah, right. he, he did it. Uh, Aaron Venucci from University of South Carolina, um, T.J. Rohrbau, he was the the ARL guy that gave a talk. He he was the guest one night. So yeah, we're all about it. If if somebody wants to, does sure. Trump does Trump have a university? Trump University, I think it. it failed right it's no longer in existence because they got sued because they were overselling their grade or their um degree value okay 
Not R1, I'm assuming. <laughs> <laughs> that is, Trump University is not one of the 146 R1 institutions. Yeah. Speaking of which, we're an hour in. We should probably do another prediction. How many Let's do, do we have? Let's do it. All right. And I'll keep I'll keep grinding out. Oh, am I doing this level again? I'm oh. not keeping track of things well. How do I go back to do another one? Like I did choose outcome, but then it doesn't have a complete prediction. But uh, what the heck? Um, hit the refresh button on this page. It might have crapped out when we... Okay, try it again. I'll uh, go back. Uh, delete, maybe? Sure. Okay. No, it's going to return all the points. I thought we chose an outcome, chose an outcome on that. Go back. Did we not? When do I choose an outcome? When I'm setting it up? No, afterwards. Should be after it closes. I could have swore we 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 gave that answer. Oh, maybe I just need to do that. Less than 150, right? That was the answer. Yeah. Oh no, people get paid. Oh, <laughs> congratulations! Yeah, somebody just got a bunch of internet points. Congratulations! <laughs> what was the payout on that one? It's like 1.15 1. to to one. Yep, one and a half to one. Hey, those are pretty good odds. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna find that in Vegas. Yeah, exactly. What's blackjack? It's like one point. Zero five or something like that. Thanks for your God, patience on those that points, button. everyone. Uh, okay, we're gonna start another one here. You got, a, you got one in particular that you'd like? No, to whatever, whatever looks interesting. Oh, this is a good one. Hmm. This, this starts a good conversation. I need dolphin kicking through this water. Button mashing, ladies and gentlemen. What's making that noise? It's me kicking through the water. <laughs> <laughs> so every time I do this little, little shoes you got there. this little speed burst. Yeah. Ah. All right. You guys so just two get to And here comes a prediction. The prediction is what percent of admits accept the offer to FSU? And so out of the total students that this we... Visiting admits, uh, just uh, to clarify. Oh, visiting so, admits. so we admit people to the program, and if you're a domestic student that's admitted to the program, you get we pay to fly you out to FSU and visit our program and, and visit our uh, departments. So we have two different weekends, one in March and one in February. The question is, of the students that come and visit, and we typically have, what, 30 in February and like 10 to 15 in March, what percent of those students will actually accept our offer? And so keep in mind, I mean, one of the rough maths you could do behind this and something we think about a lot is if students on average apply to five to ten programs and get accepted to four, uh, the odds of accepting any given one of those offers is one in four. And so, yeah, that gives you some context into this number. All right. Kyle, Kyle's bringing the heater again while we wait for this. Are, are there other universes? Uh, and is there a multiverse? I don't even know what the difference between Unity and multiverse actually would mean. I, I don't know how to think about that problem. What I will say is, as far as I know, there's no testable hypothesis whether there's a multiverse. There are certain models that suggest a multiverse might exist, but unless you can test it, what is the point of that conversation? <laughs> Which universe has the best Spider-Man? <laughs> Cuddle puppy ours. asking the important down, question. It's, it's ours. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, would, a, would a multiverse be like the same universe but 10 seconds ago? Like a, I, a different time stream? Uh, it depends who's defining multi- Oh, I just got... Yeah, I, I can't think that to that level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it makes me spin, so... Yeah, and again, if you if you can't test a hypothesis, what's what is the value in the model? Because I mean, I can we're on the backs of turtles, and it's turtles all the way down, right? There's a dude up there. Can I kill him though? I don't know. He looked kind. Oh, <laughs> take right. that. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That did not look like a threatening animal. It like <laughs> no, a, it like didn't. A pet that you could. Well, now I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just here murdering, which we'll do later at NARC anyway. Checkpoint. This isn't a particularly challenging game. Okay, has that been two minutes? I think so. Yeah, time is out. 
All right, so we're gonna choose the outcome. Over 40% of you, over no, over 90% of you said over 40%, and the answer is greater than 40%. Yes. I'm gonna assume they use meta information because why would we bring this up if the number was it, not high? It does lead in that direction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's a it's like a multiple choice question where one of the answers is clearly not the answer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, but for us, the number on average, I think the last, what, five years is something like 50%. Last year it was 63%, wow. which is absolutely insane. When you think about that, half the people that visit us like it so much, they're like, I want to stay here at FSU. So yeah, that's, I mean, that's astounding. And that's one of the things I recommend anyone thinking about applying and and if you get admitted to a program, like go visit the school. Cause you don't know, you don't really know what it's like till you spend some time there, right? Like a web page can only give you so much information. It can tell you, you know, papers and things, but you don't know the people, you don't know the culture, you don't know the city, you don't know the like lab spaces and what they look like and whether you want to be there. And so visiting is absolutely crucial. I mean, for me, that was a big thing as well. Yeah, I think I've told the story once before, but you know when I when I was hired at FSU or when I get when I was given an interview to become a professor at FSU, that that was the first time that I had set foot anywhere near Tallahassee, and I didn't really have an opinion of FSU chemistry. I didn't know anybody from there in my field or anything like that. And um, you know, you think about football, like if you grow up, you're my age, the thing you think about first with FSU is like the 1980s football team or whatever back in the Bobby Bowden days and um, yeah, anything. was pleasantly impressed with the department here at FSU and the, and the facilities, the, the, the faculty, the colleagues. Um, uh, so really glad I gave it a chance and uh, I'm here now, so. Oh. Okay, um, will we ever cure cancer? Guess who asked that one? <laughs> <laughs> is that Kyle? Is Kyle or Kylie? I, I don't. Ooh, so, what is this? Bubble, I mean, I guess you Mario. could. I guess you could potentially phonetically say either. We'll, we'll ask Kyle to do a phonetic spelling for for clarity. But uh, <laughs> Kyle would like to know if we will ever cure cancer. Oh, man. Um, uh, I'd like to think that we would at some point, given all the money that cancer research raises. Uh, I mean, the hard part about it is that, like, I don't know if you'll ever stop cancer, but can we have a mechanism to deal with it when it happens, right? Yeah. Or prevent it, maybe. Prevent yeah. It with cancer. Maybe if it, I don't know. Yeah, neither of us are biology, biochemist related, so. Ooh, Master has got some insights. Oh, that's fun. Did you see that? Oh. Yeah, no, so now I have a, an assist tool. That's pretty fun. And so you blow a bubble, then you can jump on it. Yeah. Like a launch pad. Yeah, yeah. Oh. oh no. My bubbles. What is L? Oh, that's. Can only Luigi hit that? That's pretty interesting. So I'm getting into this. this is pretty fun. This is introducing a lot of mechanics I wasn't I haven't seen before. Which is kind of fun. I've played a lot of Mario games. Too many Mario games. But yeah, if you guys are just joining us for Ask a Scientist Gaming, uh, mediocre gameplay expert science tonight. We have expert uh, advice in graduate admissions. Is that what we're calling it? <laughs> but if you guys have any any questions about you know applying to graduate school, what graduate school is about, uh, we're happy to answer those questions. One of the things I didn't know when I was undergrad is you get paid to go to graduate school in the sciences, whether it's physics, biology, uh, engineering. You actually get a salary and your tuition is covered. So unlike med school where you go on massive amounts of debt, in the sciences you get paid. It's not great at FSU. I think our new rate. Is is what 29 so it's not bad i mean cost of living wise it's pretty pretty reasonable it's not you're not gonna live yeah. in like life of cost luxury of living is important yeah if you if you compare a graduate student stipend in new york city versus tallahassee and you look just at the number value you're it's it's not accurate because you, you know you need that much to live uh in new york and you need that much to live here uh so anyway yeah no, that's something to consider. Like, look up a cost of living comparison because, 
yeah, if you're making 29,000, I did this for a, I gave a talk on Monday to the, the acts, the social fraternity for chemistry about graduate school and graduate school demystified. And I looked it up for one of the slides. It's 29,000 in Tallahassee. You'd require a salary of 55,000 in San Francisco. Right. And so it's almost double, which is insane. So what's at the bottom of the ocean? Probably a whole lot of car keys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> car keys and shit. I can tell you one thing that's at the bottom of the ocean, and that is the car keys to my 1991 Honda Civic DX. Uh, that is somewhere at the bottom of the ocean. Um, oh, that's just man. one thing. I was so pissed when I dropped this. I believe it. So pissed. You're not getting them back because you, you couldn't get home from there. Really cool fish, too. Yeah, yeah at the, the depths. The ones with the lights. Yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, those are pretty spectacular. According to Radar Sand. <laughs> Thank you, Radar. We don't have to go all the way down there and dis get disappointed. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm sure I'm missing very important lore in this game, but I'm skipping over all the text boxes. Oh, uh, yeah, you can read it later. Yeah, you, fish you can watch things. the video recording of this and, and, and <laughs> pause it. Yeah, not the early part, man. That sucked. The video, I feel bad. Kyle, I agree. When will we have robot butlers? Can we get this? <laughs> can we get this technology moving forward? Man, what what makes me angriest about that is not like the personal aspect, but it was one of those. I mean, we've heard since we were younger that like robot technology and things like that would you know, make our lives easier. And yet we're working more than we ever have. So yeah, w when will life get easier because of technology? I want to know when that's going to happen. Oof, got kicked in. Yeah. I mean, the room of... Yeah, I mean, no, that's true, start, to some it's extent. It's a start, yeah, yeah. but you know, let, let's, let's up it. Oh God. <sighs> I deserve that. Let's get it to that, do windows. But... Let's get it to like, get the cobwebs out of the corners of the ceiling and stuff, man. Little robot arm. Yeah. Oh, is that it? I have ten lives. Okay. Are you dead? I died once. Well, I'm dead twice now. Good game. <laughs> <laughs> Dick. <laughs> uh, just friendly. I like this game so far, though. I mean. To put into perspective this robot thing, this year is the first time I finally let go of my stubborn attitude of I'm going to do it all. Yeah. Right? I hired a pool guy. I hired a yard guy. Oh, you did. You committed. Yeah, I, I went all in. Yep. Yard guy, pool guy. We got like an AC guy, a mm -hmm. plumber, like all these things. I'm like, I'll fix it. I'm the man, right? You know, yeah. I, I get it done. I just don't have the time. Yeah. Uh, and. You know, I, I'm, my, my clarity is so much better now. Like, yeah. I don't have to worry about all this stuff on the weekend. I can enjoy my daughter. I can enjoy playing golf or something, right? Yeah. Uh, so, not only that, and nothing against you, but they're experts at it, right? Yeah, like They're exactly. really good at what they do. They do it quicker. They do it more efficient. They do it better than we will. So. Yeah. And, and they're liable for it being done wrong. <laughs> exactly. So I could do it wrong and then, you know, it just... Yeah. Right. No, time is the most valuable thing you have. Speaking of which, going back to grad school, time is the most important thing, right? And so one thing to look at when you're looking at graduate schools is what type of support resources are available. And so this could be everything from a, a glass blower to an electronics shop, to a machine shop, to, you know, how do they fix pumps when they go down, right? What staff do they have available? That stuff is so priceless because your time is the most valuable thing you have. And so if you can outsource that to other people, it's amazing. So too late now, but there was an infinite lives trick in this in this stage that you just missed. Oh, did I? The shell jumping thing? Just somebody giving advice on Ma that? Master Master Ralph Alpha. Master Ralph 1738. Huh. That's interesting. Is it like a shell jump off a no, stairwell not, type? Not in thing? this stage. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. I'm gonna after this, I this world. after I play this a bunch, I'm gonna go watch some of the speedrun strategies and things like that. But does FSU have dorms? Yes, for undergrads for sure. I think grad students can stay in the dorms. There's certain dorms for grad students. I don't believe I've ever had one of my students stay in one, so I don't mm. have a uh, um, a, a perspective on 
uh, on that. Mm -hmm. uh, there, just like every college town, there are primarily undergraduate inhabited areas and off-campus areas. Um, a lot of the graduate students that that I've had, they live in more uh, professional communities, you know, where there's like more, just less partying and less noise so they can get sleep. And some of them, you know, are, are further along in life than, than that at, mm -hmm. at this point anyway. So, um, yes, there are, there, there likely are graduate dorms. Um, but again, cost of living at FSU is, is not too bad and, uh, or, or in Tallahassee in general. So you can also, uh, likely have the option of a, of a nice apartment, um, in a, in a more, professional community but if you go to somewhere like columbia and downtown new york city like yeah student housing is everything like it's subsidized it's much cheaper than normal rents um so yeah something definitely to look in th into but i think we're relatively cheap oh master ralpha is in a dorm so he can oh, confirm nice yes. so thank you mm. good game I certainly wouldn't want to live near undergrads as a grad student. Uh, no comment, but yes, <laughs> I totally agree. There's a certain threshold of maturity or age, I guess. This is interesting. You came correct with your uh, with your wall game. Yeah. Your, your, oh, your, and I'm... your parkour. <laughs> yeah. So I play a lot of uh, Mario Maker 2, which has a lot of wall jumps and things like that. Oh, oh no! Oh, right when I say that, I jinx you. Just. Uh, it's fine. How's the food at FSU asking for a friend? <laughs> That's an excellent question. <sighs> this is non trivial. I'm getting wrecked here. Uh, it's. Well, I mean, you can find all your classic chains, uh, uh, you know, just like you can anywhere else. But you know, I'd say some of the, you know, what, what's like like staple food. You know, we have the southern cuisine, uh, barbecue, things like that. But we also are really close to the Gulf of Mexico, so we have, you know, I I I feel like we've got um, some of the best seafood. Uh, imaginable if you like seafood fresh fresh out of the ocean that day seafood you can find local fisher shops where you can go in there and get the whole fish head and all <laughs> the whole thing right out of the gulf of mexico that day and put it on the grill uh, it's pretty yeah. fantastic you're into fish heads <laughs> all right man I, I i've had fun with this game but I'm, I'm thinking about we should try something else should we do some mutant league hockey yeah i think the 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 attendees have been uh patiently awaiting <laughs> yeah, Mutant who hockey. needs Super Mario when you have Mutant League hockey? All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to change it up a bit. All right, close this guy up. Yeah, keep in mind, uh, FSU is in Tallahassee, Florida, which is the capital of Florida. So it's not just a university town. It's also got the Capitol building. And so you have a very large variety of restaurants, all from fine dining down to Taco Bell, right? So anything for anyone's budget. Um, if you're someone that enjoys spending more money on really extravagantly good cuisine dinners, you can find that in Tallahassee. Um, if you want to find some mom and pops, uh, you know, like napkin, barbecue chicken you can find that too um there's some fantastic little local southern food food trucks and stuff like that around as well so there's really kind of something for everyone uh in every budget if you're if you're into it taco bell is not fine dining yes i would i would agree with that <laughs> but don't hit anything yet um configuring controller all right save that all right there we go all right, should I play a regular game? Playoffs? Sure. And Death Index. Did you know this game has a Death Index? Rough, bloody, bone-breaking, slaughter, and annihilation. I mean, I think we have to go with annihilation with no penalties, right? Is five, like, the maximum? Yep. Okay. 
<laughs> so yeah, anyone not familiar this is a game for the sega genesis it wasn't particularly popular but this was one of my favorites when i was growing up and i'm going to be honest I've i don't think i've ever scored a goal in this game but it turns out you can actually win uh as long as you murder the other team so that's what we're gonna do great <laughs> Kylie 294 just like did you stumble upon a web page of just like existential questions <laughs> yeah like not happy I'm the robot team did I pick that regrets so yeah you can go around and punch people and kill the goalie Classic. and you can get chainsaws in here which I have to figure out where that is Ah, huh. maybe the crowd throws it in over the glass. <laughs> yeah, it's team base. Like total oh. recall or something. <laughs> Rollerball. I like it. Oh, there we go. There's an axe. I don't even care about the puck anymore. I just need my axe. <laughs> just Kyle I'm has curious. pointed out that you will never know what it smells like underwater. Do you think things smell different underwater? I, mean, I, I wouldn't breathe in through my nose underwater. I don't think it's a good idea. But, <laughs> but I uh, mean, we could take the molecules and we could simulate what it's like to smell underwater, right? <laughs> Fish underwater. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I'm actually on a uh, undergrad thesis committee for someone in the um, neurobiology program. They're studying the olfactory system and like the structures that make it up and where smells come from. Um, so I'm excited to genuinely learn about that because like I get molecules and, you know, aromatics and things like that and why those structures exist, but how they're processed in the brain and the body is something else. Oh, there we go. Look at that. I got an ax. We got this, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Smells like getting waterboarded. <laughs> Sounds accurate. <laughs> oh, man. That's great. But yeah, if you guys have any questions, throw them in chat. We're happy to answer them. Anything grad school related, anything admissions related, any advice we have, anything we can clarify, or just get wisdom from chat, including what it smells like underwater, we can do our best guess. But yeah, the, the admissions process is an interesting one because it's... You know, ultimately, it's just a bunch of professors trying to make a decision based on, you know, comparing GPAs, comparing letters of recommendation, and it is hard to do. And so, yeah, was, on the other end, the best thing you can do is put your best foot forward and realize it's out of your hands at some point. Oh, man, I'm getting wrecked. I'm actually trying to score goals instead of just murdering them, but maybe I should go back to my murder strategy. <laughs> there you go, I just blew up that guy. Oh man. Miss me? Yeah, no, absolutely. Oh, we got a fight, ladies and gentlemen. Fight in Mutant League Hockey. <laughs> So what is grad school besides another level of university? That, that that's, that's a good question. So, so I, I actually had this discussion with my students fairly recently because it's, it's underappreciated. So undergrad, you have hoop jumping and you have classes and you have classes and it's much more similar to high school. The way to think about grad school is much more like an apprenticeship. Like back in the day when you had to learn blacksmithing or whatever it is, or even now when you have to learn like plumbing or electrician, um, it's it's much more of an apprenticeship where you work under somebody and you have projects that you're working on, but you still have someone there to guide your projects. And so that's, that's the way I'd think about grad school rather than classes, because that's a very small part of it. My goal is to score a goal in this game. That's it. The bar is Just quite low. Yeah. So I, I think a lot of people come to graduate school thinking that it's an extension of undergraduate school. Um, you know, it's it's not. It is the first step in, a, in adulting. Uh, you do have a job when you come to grad school, and it requires, you know, work to 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 accomplish what you need to accomplish to write a thesis at the end. Um, and so it's much more independent. 
we do not, uh, here's a great example of the difference between undergrad and grad school. In undergrad, I will tell you that you need to learn between page 48 and 57, and there will be a quiz on that next week. And you will go and read that book chapter or whatever three or four times until you memorize it, regurgitate it, and then probably forget it after that quiz is over. <laughs> that, that, is, that is not what grad school is like. The answer is not found between page 47 and 58 in the textbook. The answer is unknown, and you have to actually discover and accumulate data and vet that data and come up with hypotheses as to why that data is the way it is. And you might actually be wrong and you might be right and you might not know it right away. Um, so, and there um, might be more yeah. than one answer and you yeah. just say, here's what I think it is, but it could be this as well. Cause there is no right answer and whatever you come up with is going to be wrong to some degree. So yeah, no, I totally agree with that. And Huggy Beer, I'm glad somebody other than me has played Mutant League series. There was a Mutant League football and a Mutant League hockey. Um, <laughs> Huggy Beer, my, my strategy is to murder the other team so they don't have enough players to fill the roster. And then you win the game. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Love For, it. A forfeit win. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay, so we've had some chatter here. Um, yeah. Thanks for the question, uh, Trinizati. Trinizati. Uh, it, was, it was a very good question. I hope we answered it. If you have any follow-up questions, we'll be happy to, to address those, too. Um, you're, you're worse of a ball hog than Kobe, uh, says Kyle. Uh, <laughs> Cuddle puppy, take that back. <laughs> Huggy, Bear, Huggy Bear is yes is in love with the Mutant League games. Um, oh, man, look at this. I got the... What is this? This is not a mace? Yeah. Is this a mace? Yeah. So, so Kai Strider... That's, it's almost taken right out of my Rolodex. It, graduate school is where you learn how to learn. That's yeah. that's exactly what I tell my grad students. You need to learn how to learn because the way you've been taught to learn up until that point um, is like I described between page forty-seven and fifty-eight in the textbook. So, and this homework problem. So, and that. Sorry to interrupt, but yeah. I'm I'm murdering them as they come out of the box to replace the murdered individuals. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a pile of bodies here. <laughs> sorry to sorry no, to interrupt. No, this I is important. That was important <laughs> to, to, uh, oh, see, look at that. They're down to four plate. <laughs> if I murder two of them, they lose. <laughs> Oh, welcome to Ask a Scientist Gaming, <laughs> expert scientist, mediocre gameplay, living up to its name with Mutant League Hockey. Oh, man. Huggy Beer, I hope you played this legit and you're insulted by my st my uh, game strategy. <laughs> oh, it's a flail. No, you're right. Mace doesn't have a flexible shaft. I think it's a flail. No, you're absolutely right. Okay. Um... Did you kill them all yet? Maybe, oh, 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 there goes right. one. There we oh, go. I like him. <laughs> his head fell onto his stick and impaled. <laughs> telling you, this game's legit, ladies and gentlemen. You all need to play an emulator of this. Finish him. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> okay, we have a question. Uh, I have a 3.1 cumulative GPA, 3.65 science GPA. Would chemistry research for a year and working as a lab TA for a few semesters be enough to apply for grad school? I'm guessing that question is they don't think that they're going to get into grad school with that with that level. A year um, working in lab, I mean, if you get a good letter from your advisor above a 3.0, I mean, that'll get you in, like, what, top 25 to 75 schools? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. I mean that depending on your research experience and the amount that that might get you into FSU actually. So I don't I don't think you necessarily need that much more. I mean if you want to get into the MITs of the world, I mean their their average GPA is probably what three point eight or something ridiculous right. like that. Right. That's that's the password. What? Uh, there's a question about a concern about. A letter of recommendation coming from a Gmail account. Um, oh, that is probably a red flag. We've grow, grown increasingly concerned with this, actually. Fake email addresses and things like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, professors know what a letter of recommendation needs to look like for an official letter of recommendation. Um, you know, there's... there's Letterheads, signatures, uh, and typically it comes oh my from God, an official email wrecked. address within the university. Um, 
you know, you just have to understand that in the age of AI and ChatGPT and all of these other things that are developing very rapidly, it can be enticing for someone to try and forfeit or not forfeit, um, counterfeit a letter of recommendation. Um, so graduate admissions is, is typically on alert uh, for, for things like that. And to avoid any issues or complications with the, the application process, we highly recommend that you um, get your letters to come from an official university email source. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my God, I almost love the score. Oh, um, the drink. But great question. Um, that, that actually does address some of the new challenges that we're facing in the graduate admissions process. So. Oh, there's the flail. <laughs> we interrupt this massacre <laughs> with another question from Kyle. Do you I don't have time for this, Kyle. <laughs> I, I'm trying to kill people. Yeah, like, priorities. <laughs> Do you know bath salts and not the drug? I don't know. I don't. What is it? Do you know bath salts and not the drug? Bath salts? Is it a band? I, 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 do you remember that story back in the like early 2000s in Florida? That like somebody was high on bath salts and ate somebody's face. Yeah, that sounds like the drug though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it wasn't even like a drug at that time. It was like meth or something. And bath salts happened to exist in there. I don't know. Yeah, that was a weird story. I'm just getting wrecked in these fights. What the? What is going on? I feel like your audience knows more about these bath salt sims than we do. Yeah, I've, they're, I've, they're replying. And I've not things. kept up on this. What, what's the What's the conclusion? Uh, it sounds like it might be a game. <laughs> Interesting. I don't know. Maybe. Okay. Oh my god! I'm actually getting beat right now. Maybe. It's hard to tell. Score zero zero. But every time I get in a fight, they absolutely destroy me. Watch this guy just come out swinging hard. <laughs> the chat's going off the rails a little bit. I'm having <laughs> the letter O. I love the letter O. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the views of chat don't necessarily represent FSU or chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> So I think people are offering advice about this whole like academic email issue that has been going on. Yeah, I mean, like, so FSU's gotten very rigorous, not checking it at a department level, but at a university level, they will flag emails that are suspect. And yeah, you might get completely blackballed from admissions. We've had, last year we had one case where somebody was admitted to the program by our department, but the university said no, because they couldn't verify their details. And so, yeah, this is no joke. It does, it does matter. A lot of first time chatters. If you guys are just joining us for the first time, click the follow button. It helps our visibility and you get notification about, you know, streams that are coming up. Also, I like my internet clout increasing. So yeah, feel free to click the follow button. And watch us just murder. There we go. All right. <laughs> watch this guy. If, if I can beat this guy in a fight. Just backed me in a corner. Oh, that What's wasn't you? No, I got wrecked. Oh, I'm the nice. robot. I'm gonna follow. Hey! Where, where did that pop up at? Followed from... Huggy <laughs> beer. Can someone explain how skeletons move without musculature? No, the follow is right there. All right. Trinizati, thanks for following Ken's Ask a Scientist channel. I'll take credit for that. <laughs> yeah, no, we will absolutely. It's a shared. As host, oh, oh, as look host at this. I'll, I'll take credit. Um, uh, did you get any follows when I was the guest? Oh, I'm sure I did. We we get like we average what eight to ten follows per stream, which is actually ridiculous for a Twitch stream. Can you let that guy out of the ice, dude? You're slipping. I did. I, I'm trying to get. I'm literally passing the puck to the guy with the chainsaw. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> yep. There we go. I think you can kill the goalie too, but I have not been able to yet. Can somebody explain how skeletons move without musculature? That is a good question. Oh, my own teammate dove at me there. Can you hit your own teammates? 
I, I, I don't think I can hurt them. Oh, there we go. Oh, you just chopped that guy's arm off. That's good. Nice. Oh, oh wow, they scored. Someone wants to see you do Mike Tyson's punch out. Uh, is Ken good at punch out? I used to be pretty good. I, I could I could make it up to Tyson pretty consistently. Tyson was always a challenge, though. Uh, the world record was beat fairly recently. Um, it was, I think it's Summoning Salt, the, the, the historian. He's a big punch out player. Summoning Salt? Yeah, he's, he's like salt. Uh, <laughs> Summoning Salt is the name of the... Oh, I got the goalie. Damn it. All right. Oh, Huggy got Beer's got the coming. code. That's awesome. I never, I, m I never made it past uh, Soda Popinski. Popinski, yeah. He always wrecked me. Um, God, I've lost every fight this round. I knew that code before my sus. I think, well, I think I knew the code before my sus. Yeah. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> Very true statement. Oh, man. I should be on a t-shirt. <laughs> it really oh look at that two more nope one down who, who wants to dance like they're winning the game right now but it doesn't matter if they don't have enough players <laughs> just flailing with a chainsaw Is that it, or is that the period? I, I don't know. I mean, it happened right after you killed that guy, so... Do you know Kepler-186F, a.k.a. Earth's cousin? Oh, presumably that's, um... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, another... Uh, another exoplanet that's in the habitable zone, similar size, similar... Yeah, that's, that's pretty exciting. I, I love that they're discovering so many planets. Kepler 186F, the first Earth-sized planet in the habitable oh, in the habitable zone. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's even AI concepts. <laughs> Whatever that means. <laughs> oh, got another follow. Ah, right on. Welcome. Uh, let me see if I can find who it was. Megan, thanks for the follow. Megan, welcome to the stream. We're playing some uh, Mutant League hockey while answering questions about grad school, either admissions, applications, graduate school experience. If you guys have something, um, yeah, if you want something answered, feel free to throw them in chat. We are happy to do it while I murder some people in Mutant League hockey. I'm starting the game with a chainsaw. This is not a good sign for them. Yeah, and don't be shy with any questions about the Yeah, process. this is anonymous. Like, yeah. if you're going to ever ask these questions, now is the time to do it via chat. Uh, except Cuddle Puppy, I am. <laughs> <laughs> and Kyle, I think Kyle's cut off the question for at least 10 minutes. Oh, Kyle has some fun science questions. <laughs> Kyle, you've joined us on an interesting night where we're talking grad school admissions. It's not that we don't want to answer the questions, we will. Um, but, but yeah, uh, we're trying to stay on that topic, but we'll, we'll go existential a little bit at least. So, so Kepler-186F has been determined to be in a, in a like sweet zone of proximity to the yeah. stars to the where water could be liquid. Yeah. And there's so, probably life on that planet. At least I'm trying to find how many light years away it is or how far away it is, but I can't. Uh, oh, it's about 500 light years from Earth. Uh, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, so good luck. But I'm sure we're watching it for like signals of Oof. the flail. This game's so unrealistic. <laughs> I mean, technically, if we had a really strong light 500 years ago, they'd be able to see it today. <laughs> Say something from the Bible. Let there be light. <laughs> Do you guys watch FNAF? Friday night. <laughs> You're just making it up as you go. Freddy's? <laughs> oh, Five Nights at Freddy's. Is that what it is? That's, that's the acronym? I haven't seen the movie. I'm familiar with the game, but... No, I haven't seen it yet. Is it good? Uh, Mike Shatruck recommended to me the the creator. Apparently, it's a new sci-fi movie that came up that's about uh, artificial intelligence and war with artificial intelligence, ah. which is kind of fun. And 
appropriate given our timeline. Huggy Bear's on his way to that uh, other planet. He's got a radio back when he gets there. <laughs> All right, talk to you in 570 years. <laughs> it's realistic that Ken loses at hockey. How <laughs> dare you? So fun factoid. Uh, so I was back in Minnesota. I gave a talk at St. Thomas University. Hopefully somebody's in the chat. If you are, drop, it in, drop a line in chat because, yeah, it was fun to visit their department. But the family went back with me because we had a memorial service on the Saturday for a family member. Um, but we also went to a hockey game. And so my daughter's first sporting event was a hockey game, actually. And so they're Florida kids, but they still have have that on the books which is kind of fun there we go we got a flail ladies and gentlemen <laughs> so there's an fnaf movie that was released yeah five nights at freddy's okay. yeah yeah that was a recent release too it was like a week ago or something it came out so ken describe the weather in tallahassee in summer or winter oh winter we get what do we get three days that go below freezing something like that it's it's only a few um it'll be in the 30s and 40s through december and january other than that it jumps up pretty quickly i mean man we're mostly what 60 to 80 nine months out of the year yeah uh july and august we're not gonna lie they suck because the humidity <laughs> is so high like it's like you're swimming through the air it's pretty it's pretty gross um ladies and gentlemen note the scoreboard bots zero monsters won, but bots have won <laughs> <laughs> Because of, you killed them all. Yep. <laughs> that's how I've won every single I mean, game. That, that's, I still have not scored a, very, a goal. Uh, and now I'm playing the, uh, presumably the championship game. <laughs> oh, man. The air is soup is an ac. Uh, yeah, that's an accurate description. But that's only for like two months. And like right now, it's pretty nice out there. It might be a little bit I, colder. It is beautiful out there at this time of year. Yeah. Pass it to that guy because he's got a chainsaw. Ooh, chainsaw versus flail. Flail won that battle. Does he drop it when I kill him? Huggy Bear is concerned that we're making movies about fighting AI that they might learn our tactics on how to fight them. <laughs> <laughs> it is a new data set. So we should like mess with him and like, oh yeah, if you pour water on humans, they die. Like that'll that'll really mess with them. <laughs> Do not give them pancakes. Um, in Atlanta, the summer lasted nine months. I refuse to believe it's shorter in Florida. No, it's not shorter. It's that like, you know, there's seven months of nice and then there's two months of horrible. That's like the really humid and hot. And yeah, so it's still summer, but it's gross summer and not particularly exciting. And it's kind of tragic heads up for those of you guys that like apply to FSU and come for visitation. You'll come in February and March when it's really nice and it's like not too rainy or anything like that. But then you'll arrive in July and August <laughs> and you're going to be moving furniture in the grossest weather we possibly have. And you're going to regret your decision. Oh, look at that. I can block. I didn't know that. Yeah, I mean, so we can we can start feeling like the heat, the heat builds as early as early june right so we can get some weeks in june that feel pretty oppressing and then, mm -hmm. uh, you know it can last well into september as well yeah i think october is when the when the cold i mean when the heat breaks and it's really nice and then it'll be kind of a little bit overcast and chilly uh through march march is usually when it it hits spring and and then it's nice until about june so oh yeah the other qualifier is um if you're not used to pollen like southern state pollen we get a pretty heavy pollen season in like february i don't know were you allergic at all because i i definitely felt it no i i get fall allergies so uh, I, i'm allergic to like rot and spores but i mean i think the pollen here is so darn ridiculously big and aggressive that it doesn't even get into my body it just, <laughs> it just covers my car it's uh, everywhere yeah i'm gonna win a fight one more hit yeah nice oh, thank you of all of my achievements <laughs> this is by far the greatest speaking of achievements so i promised myself i wouldn't drink too much tonight because i have the 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 Tallahassee Scientific Society gold medal thing is tomorrow night. 
So that's when I get the like award ceremony and get ah. the talk. I don't want to be hungover for that. I have all day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's true. I'll just sleep all day and recover. What's fun about it is I'll, I'll talk about some of our science, but also the outreach stuff. So I'll have a couple slides on Ask a Scientist Gaming. So. Are you yeah. going to play this game? And <laughs> should I show them a clip of this? Quality, this like, is what we do. Outreach. Yeah, no, this, this is what the kids are into these days. <laughs> Mutant League Hockey. I demand they make a remake of this game. There we go. Okay, so any anyone that's new in the uh, audience, this is Ask a Scientist Gaming. I'm Professor Justin Kenimer. This is Professor Ken Hansen with the chainsaw. On ice. <laughs> with the chainsaw. I'm adding that to my resume. <laughs> We're here to answer any of your questions regarding graduate school, graduate life, life after graduate school, PhD in general. We also are answering questions about uh, octopi and multiverse and we'll talk about photochemistry and polymers or pretty much anything science related we're happy to dive into but oh man i'm two murders away from winning this tournament which is a sentence i utter on ask a scientist gaming <laughs> why is your ice cream i don't know it's a good question but that is a forfeit right there ladies and gentlemen and decimate them oh there's one guy if they get less than three, ah, okay. I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm celebrating my own GGs. Megan, welcome to chat again. Thank you for the follow. Thank you for joining us for the stream. If you have questions, she has questions. I'm going to assume that's a she. I apologize if not. Um, okay, yeah. Great question about average time to PhD. Mm. Um, do, would you like to, as, as the guest, would you like to start on that one? Oof. Horror stories how some orgo slash palmers take seven to eight years. Man, how many, we've had maybe one seven year in the time I've been here. Yeah. Like, that's a very rare thing to happen. Um, I think our average time is um, 5.2 years at FSU. And so that's a balance of, you know, some are shorter, some are longer. Uh, I think biochem typically takes a little bit longer just because they're working with cells and things like that. But yeah, I eight years. I think I think we'd boot somebody at that point. Yeah, that, I mean, there's got to be a there's got to be a reason why it, it, it takes that long in very special circumstances. And of course, you could probably hear a horror story like that. You could probably also find somebody that got done in like four years, which is above average. Um, uh, but the the average is around five years. Um, keep in mind that most universities, and, and I'll particularly plug FSU, we're very systematic in our graduate school uh, progress. So we have milestone events, we have annual reviews. There's no um, mystery as to sort of the minimum things that you need to achieve in order to get a PhD. For example, you have to maintain a GPA of this during your class period. Then when you move over to research, you must have a first author publication to get a PhD. Um, you know, that's if you're trying to meet the minimum metrics, but, but usually people, uh, the students are, are, are motivated to do better than, better than the minimum. Um, but your research project might be different, right? It might be a very in-depth invested project where you, you know, you get one very huge marquee paper and that's a big accomplishment, um, in comparison to three or four other papers. Uh, and, and you'll so. work with your advisor. There'll be a annual evaluation that basically says, here's the achievements that you need to do or expectations I have. And it's gonna vary group to group, but uh, that should be clearly outlined in the, in the relationship between you and your advisor. Yeah. Um, and so I, without telling anyone, I've just transitioned to uh, Kid Chameleon. You guys have to, if you haven't seen this game, let's do a hard reset on this. You guys need to see the backstory behind. Have you ever played this? There was a new machine in the arcade that one could walk into and play. It's like a holodeck, right? Oh, it's like a, yeah. It used holograms to create a reality not our own. Everybody played it. This is like Ready Player One. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But it was a little too real. The boss escaped and began capturing kids and defeating them at the game. By defeating them at the game, sorry. Yeah. This is the story of someone too tough to beat. Someone Jay known as. <laughs> Persimus. K. 
Kid Chameleon. <laughs> 1992 Sega Genesis. This is another one of the bargain bin ones. I absolutely love it. I know someone who took 10 years. They're very smart, excellent work, and were almost selected as astronauts. Got the final selection. They just took their time. 10 years is a lot of time to spend in grad school. I would not recommend that for anyone. That's uh, that's so a pretty I, I've brutal. been on this graduate co committee at FSU where it's, it's multi-departmental for graduate uh, study improvement. But there are departments that this is normal. 10 years is a normal track to a PhD in certain disciplines. That's crazy. Like, so when I talked to my advisor when I was getting my PhD, Mark Thompson, I was like, when am I ready to graduate? And he was said, you know, when you're not going to learn anything new, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, there, there's, there's more, th there's always another paper that I could get out, right? There's always something more I could achieve, but is it worth the time and effort to do that? I, man, I seriously doubt it. 10 years is crazy. Yeah, and, and in our our program, once you get to year five, and and it's not clear that you're going that you're near a path of graduating, you know, the, the level of scrutiny of what you need to be doing increases quite a bit. So we have data defenses, fifth year review, sixth year review, all of these get passed through the faculty uh, graduate admissions committee to find out, you know, what's taking you so long to get there. And so we, you know, we take it very seriously when someone starts to. Uh, you know, be in graduate school longer than than the the five year average plan to find out what's really going on um, there. Uh, so, so you know, these nightmare stories. I'm sure they happen from time to time, um, but they're not they're not doing anybody any favors. Not only to the graduate student, but also the department. Uh, so we we try to figure out early on what's going on and what's taking so long. And and if you're doing a visitation weekend, it's worth asking. Like maybe the PI won't tell you that. I mean, they'll be optimistic about their numbers, but ask people in the department. Like, what's the average time? What's the worst horror story you've seen? Get that information. Um, sorry, we have a couple we have to catch up on. Megan, how long does it take? Oh, uh, Salem, uh, how many years does a PhD take to complete research and courses? Courses you'll do in your first year. I think that's pretty universal. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe in the first year and a half, two years max. Some courses aren't offered every year, and you might want to wait to take that class in the second year. Um, that happens sometimes. Uh, in FSE, we have five courses. So you have to pass five courses before you can go on to full-time research. But those happen mostly in the first year, or maybe one and a half years or something like that. But after that, it's just research. I mean, technically, you still sign up for courses, but they're not real courses, I guess. They're not the same idea of courses. I gotta play some ninja here. So this feels a little bit like Mario meets Castlevania. You <laughs> know it is. And you get different suits depending on what skill drops, and they have different tools associated with them. It was a really fun game. I really liked this as a kid. It's one of the few I had for the Sega. So yeah, very Mario-esque. Can I not make this jump? Yeah, so I've never had a student take longer than five and a half years. Uh, I haven't been doing this for a long, long time, but uh, I've put out, what, seven PhDs at this point? Yeah. And, and they've ranged between four and a half and five and a half years, so. Yeah, who else? Bye, Kyle. Thanks for joining. They're probably already gone. Yeah, no, thank you. Uh, swing back again. Uh, we'll have more guests. We'll talk more science than admissions, but tonight it's all about the admissions. Yeah, Kai Strider makes a good point as well. Um, you know, the, the department is only going to support you for so many years as a uh, graduate student. Um, and so, you know, I think there was mention of the person was smart. They were just taking their time. Uh, you know, it's, it's not likely to be the case in a lot of departments that you can just sit back and take your time and, and, and sort of take as long as you want to to get a PhD. There, there's some ramifications of, of not getting finished and, and out within the, the average time frame. So. Yeah, that's just not good for anyone. I don't... Like, I feel bad for an advisor that would do that to a student because that's, like, horrible. But anyway. Uh, so Salem wants to know about employment opportunities in organic, biochemical, analytical, just various areas of chemistry, I'm, I'm guessing in general. Um, 
you want me to start with that one? Yeah, you might as well. I mean, so, that's, it's, it's a hard question because it's very yeah, broad. It is. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I'll speak a little bit from, from, from my area of research in polymers and plastics uh, industry is where almost all of my students go after they graduate because there is a fruitful amount of industry in materials and plastics, polymers for whatever application. Um, more organic uh, side as far as, um, you know, pharmaceutical industry, uh, there might be uh, industries in additives, uh, industries in, in coatings and other, and other things that come from organic chemistry. Uh, certainly, you know, quite a, a large swath of, of things that you can do with synthetic, um, with synthetic uh, expertise. Uh, biochemical I'm less familiar with, but you know, there's, there's plenty of, of money in, in, in biomedical uh, industry, so there's plenty of jobs in there too. And somebody did this analysis at some point. We have something like, uh, like a 98% job placement. Oh, I forgot this guy can climb walls. Look at that. <laughs> More or less entertaining than uh, Mutant League Hockey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the, there are employment opportunities. And keep in mind, industry is just one sector. You know, there's also national laboratories. So analytical, for example, is an area where a national laboratory might be a very um, palatable uh, working environment after you leave. Normally, national labs have you know, some of the most advanced analytical instrumentation in the world, maybe the only one in the world that's able to like analyze a specific thing. And so working at a national laboratory might be a great way to utilize like hardcore analytical uh, training. Um, so yeah, so there's plenty of opportunities and, and your advisor and the people in the department that you end up joining can certainly uh, tell you how their students have uh, what they've gone on to do when they've done their PhD. Oh, come on. I don't know what this thing is. Look at that. That is an amazing bad guy. Uh, <laughs> so, Trinizati, I often hear the advice about undergrads should ask about a professor's research. Why would a professor want an undergrad involved in their research? Question mark. It's a good question. I mean, uh, fundamentally, at a at an academic institution, our job is to train students. That's train students at every level. Like that's postdocs, that's grad students, that's undergrad students, and so uh, it's part of the job. But also, I mean, a motivated undergrad is as useful as a grad student. Like if you have a one of my rules, uh, undergrads typically join my group for at least um, at least two years. Oh, look at that. Um, and during that time, I mean, by the end of their second year, if they're in lab for a couple of years, they are very, very productive. And so it's valuable to have those individuals in our lab. Ugh. I'm just getting racked here. Yeah. And, and with grad school applications, having some level of experience in research as an, as an undergrad applying to grad school is a really good thing mm -hmm. to have on a resume um, because that's what you're going to grad school to do is research. So you're basically saying, I've already got a leg up on the skill set needed to do what I need to do in grad school by having done undergraduate research. Um, and then what Ken touched on is a really good perspective. As a, as a junior undergrad, you're only two to three years younger than a first year graduate student on average. And so are you really less qualified to do good research from a three year gap window? No, you're, yeah. you're not. You're, the, you're just as qualified. The, the dirty secret is there's no class that just makes you good at research, right? Like those extra classes, like they give you additional insights, but a lot of it's just time spent and effort put into the project. And any, any person can do that. We're speed running at this, this point. We should transition to NARC. When should we do that? Oh, look at that guy. So what about somebody that likes research? Um, likes the thrill of learning science and all that, but doesn't really like writing too much. Is grad school kind of a place for them? 
That's a hard question, because I emphasize this to my students, like, no matter what you get a job in, in the sciences, you're going to write a lot, right? It's it's part of everything. It's applying for funds, it's submitting grants, it's writing reports, it's writing papers. Um, it's definitely a hurdle that you have to overcome. I mean, with that said, what is the... I mean, our top students maybe have three or four first author papers. Like, it's not all you do. Look at that hand, it's panicking. I'm gonna get you. <laughs> that is the appropriate voice. Come here. Let me grab you. Mm. Uh, yeah, so writing is an important component of becoming a scholar. I, I think that that would be, you know, something that uh, is true. Um, writing, however, is a muscle. And I find that a lot of my students, when they start, they don't like writing because the muscle hasn't been worked out very much. Um, but when they do start writing and working out that muscle, they tend to like it a little bit more because they're getting better at it. Um, and it's human nature to like things better when you, when you feel like you're getting better at it. So so that that's my best answer. To yeah, uh, that's a fair assessment. Uh, we should probably do a prediction because we have a bunch of them and not... A yeah. whole lot of time left. We're past 10 o'clock. Time really? flies when you're playing Kid Chameleon and Mutant League Hockey. Should do a survey of the audience's favorite game of the evening. I'm going to go with Mutant League Hockey on this one. <laughs> let's, let's pick on Ken a little bit here on this question. Oh, man. Which one is it? Your undergraduate GPA. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very personal question. I actually think I might have revealed this earlier. We'll see who was paying attention when the uh, video games weren't playing. Ooh, secret pass. All right, so for anybody new that doesn't understand how this works, uh, in a second, there's gonna be a prediction uh, at the top of the screen where you can click on and bet imaginary points. Um, you can bet uh, as much points as you want based on the confidence of your answer, kind of like Final Jeopardy. Uh, and here we go. The question is, was Ken's undergraduate GPA greater than or less than 3.3? What about my Kid Chameleon gameplay? It leads you to believe <laughs> I had a GPA above or below 3.3. <laughs> uh, we know it wasn't 3.3. Yeah, it not exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay. What else do we have? <laughs> 0 0.5. <laughs> <laughs> Negative, negative, negative GPAs. Negative yeah. yeah. <laughs> negative GPA. All right. Staying sober enough to play some narc speed runs. That's my oh, goal yeah. for the night. Here we go. My fastest bum, time. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, look at that. We got tank monster going. There's a special skill. I don't remember how you do it. Yeah, we're about halfway through. You got about a minute left to answer the trivia question. Was Ken's undergraduate GPA less than or greater than a 3.3? Yeah, good luck finding this one on Lorraine, chat GPT. Take a drink, Ken. Lorraine has, <laughs> she's, Lorraine 22 is destined That's to That's Lori. Lori, cheers. Oh, Lori. I hope everything went well today. Oh, Lori Ann. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, Lori, cheers. Hi, Lori. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you. I... You probably shouldn't have a drink in hand, but if you do, cheers. Thank you for joining us uh, late in the night. I'm glad you missed earlier because our, our streaming setup was not working. Something about the video card was panicking and we were lagging heavily. So we restart the entire system and then we start it over. But yeah, it's been a fun night of questions. Uh, a little bit about TOEFL and, and uh, language scores. But yeah, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> My GPA started the search for dark matter. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Cuddle Puppy, as usual. All right, time has expired on the prediction question. And so we're going to choose the out. Oh my god, here. I just got wrecked. So the correct answer is that Ken's undergraduate GPA was, in fact, less than 3.3. Congratulations to those that correctly predicted Ken to not be so smart. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually 3.2. Oh, so yeah, not great. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life and didn't care about school. I was I was an athlete, believe it or not. I was a track athlete. So yeah, it was not a priority to do well in classes. Should we transition to NARC? I should do some NARC speedruns. 
bum, bum, bum. <laughs> Mr. Big. Mr. Big and Narc. All right. Let's go. I don't want to go. So oh, oh, don't touch. Don't oh. touch. Don't touch. Yep. I was going to look at the details of this uh, prediction. Yeah. Give me one second. I'm going to get Narc on the screen. We're going to transition over to NES, and we're going to close this one. For those that do not know what a speed run is, because I didn't know what one was two years ago, uh, <laughs> there, there is actually a running log of record holding uh, times that people have started and completed video games. And so Ken is going to do a speed run with this game, NARC. Um, to give you some perspective of the game, NARC, we actually have the original uh, game here. Uh, you are Max Force, your mission. Bust Mr. Big and destroy his dreaded criminal empire. Seize all contraband, stolen money, illegal weapons. Use rocket bombs, high-powered machine guns. Apprehend all suspects. Protect the innocent. <laughs> punish the guilty. Stop at nothing. Maximum chaos. Uh, so Ken's going to end the war on drugs in a record time. That's his goal right now. We're going to try. I'm going to play straight through regardless of, of RNG and all sorts of things. I'm just going to see how far I can get. It's been a long time since I speed run this. It's been about a year. I used to do it a lot. Now I don't so much. Oh, Strider is uh, redeemed. Take a drink. So oh. Strider, cheers. Hopefully you guys have a drink in your hand on a Wednesday night, yeah. hanging out, playing video games, talking about graduate admissions. Uh, cheers to everyone. Cheers to Lori. I hope everything went well today. Yeah, this drink will certainly calibrate your machine gun. <laughs> Huggy beer. You are basing your career on the sweet Wheaties money. And so that's that's only partially true. So I grew up in like backwoods, Minnesota, a town of 1,600 people. And when you come from a town like that, like your vision of how to get out is like be a good athlete or join the military, right? And that's 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 no joke. That's a very common thing from low income. And I grew up in a trailer house, like like poverty, not necessarily welfare, but not well off. And so it was one of those things, my dad being a coach, plus a myriad of other reasons. Yeah, sports seemed like a good opportunity. And ultimately I got a scholarship to do track in college. And so, yeah, it kind of paid off, not necessarily Wheaties box level, but we do our best. All right. You guys ready for some narc speed runs? We're going to spend the next 45 minutes doing narc as fast as we can. So those of you not familiar, Ask a Scientist Gaming, we close every single stream with making my guest play uh, narc. Uh, most of them are playing it for the first time. Me, I've played this a few times before, and so I actually do a speed run on this. So I'm going to try to do it as fast as I can on record on stream. So we've moved to the uh, uh, expert gameplay mediocre science part. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is the, the three drinks in science part. <laughs> it's not that we're bad. Oh, that was bad. Oh, that was bad. Too. We got some Mr. Big emojis coming out. <laughs> yeah, no, everyone knows. It's time. Yeah. So yeah, I might, I might lose focus a little bit while I'm playing this game because take the speed run seriously, but... I don't know, I'm not sober enough to care at this point. But yeah, if you guys have questions, you should throw them in chat, because yeah, we're answering them for the next 45 minutes at least. What would be your track nickname, since everyone has a track nickname? <laughs> track nickname? I didn't know that was a thing. I, I don't think I've ever had a track nickname. The, the Kenninator. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> oh. Hi, Strider. I'd give you reward points for that, but I don't know how. <laughs> yeah. How do we give internet points for such things? <laughs> oh, man. I'm not even good on the jump button. I was doing some squats there. So this is the official Nintendo Meth Lab yeah. with bubbling uh, New York Mets uh, colored solutions. Yeah, there's the, the, the drug dealer, Mr. Um, Hypo Man, who was a chemist that decided to make heroin and then gives it out for free by throwing it at people. <laughs> Silver Fox. <laughs> oh, man. It didn't always used to be this white, but yeah, that it took over, especially the last 10 years. I don't know if you remember, I, I did not have this white of hair. Yeah, the, the pre-tenure years aged you like a <laughs> It did, it really did. <laughs> oh, any president you see before and after, it definitely, it comes at a cost, that's for sure. <laughs> 
don't know. I've started, my white hair started coming in in grad school. I'm not going to say it was stress related, but yeah, definitely came in earlier. Yeah, that was a quick car. That was nice. One, two, three. No, can't hit the bombs like an amateur. This guy sucks. So we we had a flurry of activity on the on the uh, board here. So if there's a question that I missed, I, I apologize. Uh, feel feel free to repost it, um, and if we haven't got to it, uh, yeah, meanwhile what else? Silver Fox will work on his <laughs> speed run. So my gamer profile is a stib, and it's actually a made up word. I had a friend in high school who was in Spanish class, and any time the teacher started talking in Spanish, he would yell out gibberish back at her. <laughs> he ended every single made up Spanish sentence with the stib at a stoy. So I adopted Vestib as an identity for my video game profile. So yeah, that's, really yeah, that's where Vestib comes from. Okay. So you can look up Vestib on the internet as my Xbox Live or my speedrun profile, actually. Texan Space Agency, welcome back. It's been a while. How's life? I hope it's treating you well. I haven't seen many streams. Um, <laughs> did y'all have a rule not to stream while Texas Rangers are playing? No such rule has existed on our stream, but... Um, <laughs> I can appreciate your affiliation with that. It's been a while, I hope it's going well. Yeah, tonight we have a special stream where I'm the guest because I'm the chair of the FSU Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry Admissions Committee. Um, so we get to decide who gets into graduate school in chemistry and we're doing a Q&A answering questions about graduate school, about graduate admissions, uh, particularly in the chemistry department at FSU, but a lot of things apply across all disciplines. So um, yeah, <laughs> Texan, I don't imagine you have any questions on that front, but if you have any advice, people would be happy to hear from it. There's this. Texan Space Agency, what is the score of the World Series? <laughs> I think this is the last game if the Rangers Are win. you serious? We scheduled this on the last game of the World Series? I don't think it's like a game seven. I think the Rangers are just doing Oh, they're up well, three. If, okay. I, if I'm following it correctly. Wow, I apologize, Texan. We did not plan this well at all. How do I briefly show the the, the internet screen as the background? Um, you showed me so that. Go earlier. to that one and go to browser. Browser. Okay, so here is the... Um, official. Oh, it's oh, no. not showing up on there. Interesting. Um, click on. Wait, wait, wait. Go to. There's a browser. Uh, I can't do it while speed running. All right, you just speed run. I'll just get it back. Yeah, yeah. After this round, I'll, I'll, I'll get that to pop up. So click on NES. That'll get us back to the gameplay. All right. Sometimes it loses the browser if you open a new. Right. What I was gonna show is the official speedrun.net listing of narc high scores <laughs> where you will see that ken is in now second place second behind, place <laughs> by three seconds behind somebody named super pit fro <laughs> yes <laughs> i'm sure this very much bothers ken at night it, it actually doesn't so super pit fro held the record for a long time and then i broke the record twice and i basically told him how to beat me yeah and so he took my speed run tutorial and beat my record so okay. No animosity there. I, and I challenge anyone in the audience, any of the viewers, if you want to beat me a narc, feel free to do so. There's a 30-minute YouTube tutorial that walks through basically exactly how to do it. Um, so yeah, anyone can be a speedrunning expert at narc with the appropriate... <laughs> Kai Schreiner, in my defense, this is not Zoom. There's like 7,000 buttons that Ken has uh, set up for this uh, share screen option. And... Yeah, no, there's a, yeah, Justin's <laughs> dealing with a lot. We have like seven windows open right now. Yeah. This is a non-trivial thing to engage with with zero experience. <laughs> I guess one, you, you did it once, so yeah. I shouldn't say zero. I mean, technically, I did hit the right buttons to share it. But yeah, yeah, it, didn't, it didn't, and you have to change the browser. And <laughs> Oh, man, <laughs> what a nightmare. Who does this for fun, honestly? Oh, I'm getting Classic wrecked by cars. <laughs> It's not me, it's the computer. Exactly. Damn eye clicker wasn't working today. There's nothing I can do about that. How you feel about this run so far? Uh not great. I'm I'm not great on health. So we're gonna see if we can make it through to the end. The time is not good. I'm probably twenty seconds behind world record pace already. So you're not on an infinite life thing. You actually no, no. have to survive yeah, yeah, yeah. and beat the run. I turned off the cheat codes, yeah, because if I just so happen to break a world record, I can't have those cheat codes on. Ah. So we're doing it legit tonight, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> if I do set a world record, everyone in chat has to apply for FSU chemistry. Oh. 
Kai Strider asked a question. I thought Kai Strider was just ragging my share abilities. Hang on, I'm gonna find it. Thank you, Lori. Lori is our warden, like keeping us in check here. <laughs> no, I really appreciate that, Lori. Uh... We're gonna see if I survive this. This is gonna be interesting. It's gonna be tough on Mr. Big. And anyone that's a regular viewer, like, this speedrun gets really boring when you know which lanes to walk on, because you don't really have to do a whole lot. Ah, there it is. Thank you. Uh, it was actually a little bit closer than I thought. Okay, so what weight do you put on personal statements versus letters of recommendation versus raw GPAs as the defining factor for choosing admitted students? Do you honestly read all of these things? Question mark. We do read every single application. We, we take it very, very seriously. I mean, for us, there's a certain minimum GPA that the university expects. And so as long as you're above a 3.0, um, we're definitely going to take your application seriously. And if you have research experience, that's going to be even better. Oh, that sucks. I missed that one. Anyway. Um, sorry, but yeah, the, 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 the cover letter and the letters of recommendation are huge, especially if you have research experience. That's the only way we can tell what you might be like in lab. So, yeah, take that very seriously. Okay, that was better. Oh my god, I'm down to one hit. No pressure. Yeah, I mean, it's... In reality, it's very rare that we get letters of recommendations that are bad right that that say do not admit no i died oh. all right well you were gonna beat the record anyway so i say you try again no we're trying again ladies and gentlemen each <laughs> the Venucci rage comes out <laughs> so le letters of recommendation can be something that i just kind of look at really quick to make sure there's no red flags but a lot of them are like you know you should definitely admit the student they're great if it's um, from somebody we know we take them more seriously yeah and if there's red flags that's obviously something we take into account yeah a red flag here's an example of a red flag let's say you did three years of undergraduate research with professor y and you have no letter from Professor Y. You've decided to get a letter from your orgo teacher, your analytical teacher, and your T, your undergrad, uh, like job boss. But you didn't get a, you didn't submit a letter to the person you did research with for three years. Um, if there's a legitimate reason for that, you should put that in your personal statement. Like maybe there was a falling out or something that that needs to be known about it. But it seems like a little bit of a red flag if you did research with someone for three years and didn't ask them to write you a letter or they didn't uh, accept writing you a letter or something along those lines. So, um, yeah. 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 No, that's it. Very true. And, and while Ken is speed running, I'll just segue that into a comment that I think Ken and I do like to make uh, quite often in these programs, and that is, once again, going back to that, that personal letter that you submit with your application. That, that letter is an opportunity for you to explain things that aren't um, really able to be gleaned out of a typical application. So one example of that is, let's say you went through a hardship halfway through undergrad, and as a result of this hardship, could be family, friends, something, uh, your GPA suffered. Um, and then you, you, know, you, you got through that hardship, you rebounded, you got a lot of grit, and you finished strong in your GPA uh, towards the end. You definitely want to put a little you know, excerpt about that in your personal statement. That, that you uh, that you rebounded, that you have persistence and, and grit, that you went through a hard time, and and that your GPA might be a little bit lower than you were capable of, right? Yeah. Um, I just want to yeah. point out the RNG car drop there just screwed me out of a world record. <laughs> that was it. I lost 15 seconds to that because the card didn't drop on the first guy. So angry. The car? The card, the blue card. Oh, the card. Yeah, yeah, it's random number generated, so... So you yeah. just start over if it doesn't do Yeah, if I was doing a legit speed run, I would have quit already and started over. And you play that first minute and 49 seconds over and over again until you get the right card drop. And then, yeah, speed running, not for the, the, the weak willed. Because you start this over and over again, and maybe you get to the third level, like, I don't know, one out of 20 tries, something right. like that. 
But yeah, that's the nature of the beast. Hmm. That was fast. That was nice. Solomon's very interested in sports around tennis on Tallahassee. <laughs> yeah. So what are the tourist places and tennis clubs in Tallahassee, Florida? So I don't know much about tennis. We have tennis courts literally right behind the chemistry building. I mean, you can watch the FSU tennis team play from my office. And we hear them on the weekend. Yes. Yeah. They blare the music. And... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We can see the stadium, too, which is kind of fun. And the circus tent, actually. I don't know if you can see that from your floor, but, yeah, I can see it. Yeah, I'm too low. I don't have enough of a penthouse view. Yeah, fifth floor, we get to see everything, which is kind of fun. Uh, but yeah, touristy stuff. I mean, one of the nice things about Tallahassee, and I like this, I mean, particularly with kids, is that, I mean, we're driving distance to, like, Orlando, Tampa, Atlanta, New Orleans. Um, like, I mean, obviously the ocean's pretty close. We're about 45 minutes. But, like, we go to Disney and Legoland and, you know, Universal Studios. Atlanta has, you know, the aquariums and things like that. So Tallahassee isn't a massive city, but we have access to massive city amenities through those proximal things. Oof, that was a nice car run. It's too bad the RNG was... Oh yeah, NASA. Um, uh, Kennedy Space Center is pretty close too. That's absolutely right. And Rangers lead 1-0. Thank you, Texan. But, uh, a follow. Oh, we have a follow, and it is from Bagpipes. Yeah, there you go. 738. Welcome, Bagpipes. You should make a little bagpipe noise. <laughs> for specific for bagpipe-related profiles, I yeah. should have that ready. Yeah. I love when people pick numbers for profiles, because I'm genuinely curious, what is the origin of that? What was that one? 74? 738. 738. So not birth year. Maybe area code? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe they have 738 bagpipes. Or maybe there were 737 bagpipe profiles. <laughs> he stumbled upon the available one. <laughs> I don't know. It's an interesting game. It's a pretty solid speed run aside from that blue card drop. Maglab is pretty dope. Yes, I agree. 738, is it a bagpipe progression? I hope that's true. That's amazing if that's actually why. <laughs> that's completely made up. Screw you, Texan. <laughs> you had hope in my eyes, and then you just dash them without remorse. We do have a classic cars museum in Tallahassee. Have you been there? Yeah, that I have not. Um, it's pretty dope. If you like. Oh, is it? If you it's like it's cars. got like the Batmobile and. Back to the Future cars and stuff. Yeah, like it has I mean, a bunch of. It's basically like a storage garage for a bunch of people that have classic automobiles. That's like air controlled. And they can store it in this, and so it's on display. Yeah. But it's people's cars. So when there's like an auto show, people come to the museum and get their cars out, <laughs> and go drive it to the auto show, and then they go and they park it back there. So you you see everything in there. That's um, pretty cool. Uh, very cool old school cars. And, if you like cars, it's kind of Yeah, I haven't been there. Now it's right next to the Amazon... Um, Warehouse. Yeah. Yeah. Now there's another tourist attraction. <laughs> the Amazon. Amazon. It's a, that's a monolith with no windows. <laughs> if that's your cup of tea, we have one of those now. It's actually convenient because stuff gets delivered really quick. So bonus for Tallahassee. We have a we have an yeah, answer? Bagpipes would like to have a, a factoid. Oh, man. What do I have for factoids in my brain? Um, uh, photochemistry related. So photochemistry is light hitting things and those things responding. Uh, one of those things is vision, right? And so in, in the human eye, we have the three color receptors. It's basically red, green, blue. That's how we see various colors we do. We have three receptors. What's really fun is mantis shrimp, which going back to Huggy Beer's question about our comment about shrimp, mantis shrimp have 12 different color receptors. And so when you think about the color gambit that they can see versus humans, like RGB, we can make white and we can make the, the CIE spectrum, but they can see so much more. Plus, you know, UV plus IR and differentiating all sorts of things. There's a subset of humans that actually have four receptors that they can see like this orangish brown. It's like between the green and the red receptor, they have an additional receptor and it lets them see a lot more, which is kind of fun. 
So yeah, there's there's a factoid. Hopefully that uh that appeased the the internet points that made your internet points worth it. So the question that stands out is why all that technical stuff for shrimp? <laughs> How does this? So, so I mean, one of the working hypotheses is like underwater, your your color differentiated differentiation is much lower, right? Like all those colors get washed together. But if you have that many receptors, you can tell the difference between gray and off gray, right? Like the the slight differences ah. matter a lot more. So it's probably an evolutionary advantage on that front. But I'm about to die. It feels bad. But I'll take Mr. Big with me at least once. <laughs> so if you're a shrimp you can see everything quite clearly but you just can't get there yep <laughs> exactly <laughs> and i'm you... moving at one one millionth of a mile per hour okay oh yeah the is that the mantis shrimp that can do the the, the sound they do an ultrasonic slap that makes the superheated pocket that, that ah, yeah that's a it's a defense mechanism a sonicator yeah and it's a super high temperature. It's like a thousand degrees or something, which is pretty crazy. That's pistol shrimp. That's the one. Thank you, pistol. Texan. Yeah. yeah, those things are cool. All right, we'll I try what our. That sounds like under the water, though. Man, I mean, it's small, but it's localized. Yeah. For anything close, it's just devastating. So oh. it, it is. So we get factoids from Texan space. It's the fastest documented movement of any animal, or mo huh. yeah, movement of it. Of any animal. That's incredible. Uh, I mean, to do that, to make a sonic blast is no trivial feat, that's for sure. That's so cool. Pistol Shrimp. What a great name, too. Biologists have a speed on that front. Biologists and physicists have much cooler names than chemists. We just name stuff after people. Kanan Classic, welcome to the chat. First time chat. How far in advance do you recommend beginning to compile a grad school app? Taking the GRE, stuff like that. Also, congrats, Dr. Hansen, on the gold medal award from the TSS. Ah, uh, that's fun. That might be one of my students. Well, welcome to welcome to the stream. Thank you for joining us. You could should smash that follow button because uh, you'll get notifications about future streams. But also, uh, in terms of your application, I mean, the only thing you can really control a lot, I mean, in, in any reasonable time scale, is like your GPA is fixed by the classes you've taken and you're already dealing with that. The cover letter is the only real thing that you have control over. The other ones are like letter of a recommendation, which hopefully are forming by research and things like that. But cover letter, I mean, yeah, I don't know. For me, cover letter doesn't pull as much weight as say as a letter of recommendation than the CV does. I don't know about you. Um, so I don't know how much time. I mean, you want to make sure your cover letter is legitimate. You want to make sure. See, I've already lost the speed run because a, a blue card didn't drop. Yeah. Infuriating. I mean, that's really the limiting reagent of you being able to do this. Yeah, it really is. Is it just the blue card that's the one that's? Random? No, there's 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 three major RNG events in this game, and so this is probably the easiest one to to troubleshoot and start over. Okay. <laughs> There's the question mark. That's awesome. <laughs> First time chat from Bagpipes. Do you know Schrodinger's cat? <laughs> I do not. We did get two black cats recently, and yeah, we didn't name them Schrodinger, but it's hard to keep them separate because they're both tailless cats and they're both like pitch black. And so it's really hard to tell the difference between the two. So I'm going to call them Schrodinger's cat as they're combined. <laughs> I'll give you your appropriate answer. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, chat is smarter than we are. They're quicker in their responses, that's for sure. Yeah, and more insightful, too. Yeah, they know things. I'm sure they're cheating. We should probably do a prediction, because we, we're running out of time. All right. Prediction it up. Hang on, let me find the prediction Rolodex here. This is always a... Some of these we might have used last time, but they're... Oh, yeah, always, I reused a bunch like of them. Goodies. I was lazy. This week has been a, a nightmare for me. Not a nightmare, but, like, every night it was... Monday I gave a talk to the Axe uh, uh, fraternity for graduate school. Tuesday we had um, Halloween trick-or-treating. Did you guys go out? We went around the neighborhood, yeah. Yeah. Um, our neighborhood is becoming... Uh, younger i guess you could say with mm. more family more kids so yeah it's pretty fun. okay 
Here comes the prediction. For you don't know, there will be a little thing at the top that you can guess your answer and bet imaginary points. The question is, the number of graduate schools that Ken applied to, was it greater than or less than five? Here it comes. You'll have two minutes to <laughs> decide on your imaginary wager and place it. Yeah. What do you know about Ken? <laughs> I love these questions, and I, I do them with um, standard guests now, too, quite a bit, because it's just kind of fun. It's so like, if that's a blue card, that's a reasonable time. That's 142, so that's about a second behind world record pace. Poor kiddos, cold trick-or-treating. Oh, no, it flurried. Yeah, that sucks. Man, I remember when I was a kid, and it was like 19... I want, I want to say like 89 or something like that. No, no, it's like 99. It's, no, I would have been 89. Where there was a winter storm in Minnesota. They got a foot of snow. It was like October 30th or something like that, right before Halloween, and it shut down everything. Just devastating to a kid that age. Ooh, that was a good car. You dress as like a bear or something. Yeah, exactly. You don't have a choice. Not, not a good, not a good idea to dress as like Harley Quinn or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Ken, you have your own wiki site called Wekenpedia. Oh man, I don't have a wiki page yet. I have an, I have an IMD profile though. That's fun. It has one entry and it's strange evidence on the Discovery Channel. <laughs> say he's Ken enough. <laughs> that room's just putting the cannon pretty much in. Oh, no, it, it's perfect. I, I appreciate it. What is, your <laughs> what is my biggest fear? What is your biggest fear? Oh, man. Besides Octopi. Imposter syndrome is probably my my thing. It's like whenever I get like recognition or award or some kind of paper or some recognition, all I think is like, when are they going to find out I'm a fraud? So that's a very real feeling. That's probably my biggest fear. When will they figure out I am in fact a fraud? Answer three seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> you, when you revealed it. Yeah. yeah. Now they can feed on that and use it in chat as a weapon against me while I speed run. Mine is Octopi. <laughs> a fear? We've covered this. <laughs> They're aliens. <laughs> I didn't know it was a fear. I was, I was just assuming it was yeah, a concern. If I, saw, if I saw an octopi, I saw an octopus, I keep thinking back. If I saw one that was a size, let's say, that was half my body size. Yeah. I, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd be petrified. Like yeah. a little tiny guy, that, that's okay. No, no, the Kraken-esque size. Oh, oh, forget about it. This is like... <laughs> That's why I don't go deep sea diving. It's just there's stuff out there that's that big. I'm not I'm not dealing with that. Mm -hmm. That's fair. <laughs> Cuddle Puppy figured out you were a fraud in February 2021 when he followed you. <laughs> Cuddle Prop Public Puppy at this point probably knows me surprisingly well. Like I, I I wear my opinions and my my emotions on my sleeve, and so through. Man, that's a lot of hours of streaming Cuddle Puppy. I thank you for a long time, viewer. Um, yeah, no question. There's You've learned a lot about me. Oh, my God. Look at that. That was horrible. This is a reasonable speed run. Did you get your blue card? I did. Oh, nice. But, yeah, I, I had a late car, so I'm probably five, ten seconds behind. Info. How do I find out that info? Let me scroll up to see what we're talking about here. Texan Space Agency, I... Is that question for us? How do I find out that info? Maybe I missed the, the lead up to that. Um, oh, is this a Ken Wikipedia page related thing? Uh, yeah, maybe it might have to do with that. God, drop a card! This is the other RNG point. This guy needs to drop a green card. And I absorb pullets until he gets them. About <sighs> follow duration. Oh, okay, there we go. Oh man, is that available? I, I haven't looked that up on Twitch. That's interesting. Yeah, Texan, you're probably a long term, click at least name. a year and a half. Click your name in the chat. Little puppy, if I click that name. Oh yeah, following since February 18th, 2021. 
uh, Cuddlepuff. Wow. So you just clicked the person's name. So Lori has been following <laughs> 7, 17 2020. Yeah, so that was two streams ago when me and Eugene did the Q&A. Yeah, that's crazy. One of one of our first streams was actually... Oh, look at this. There's no card drop. Are you guys seeing this? This game is infuriating. Like, I'm just blown away. It's all the weed. Yeah, no, absolutely. Did I break this? Wow. That's the end of that speed run. Just sitting here eating bullets trying to get a green card to drop. Oh, look at it! It's right there! Son of a bitch. Uh, see behind that bush? Do you guys see that right there? I completely missed the green card fell. Camouflage. Wow. Alright. We're gonna do another run. That was that was complete horseshit. Okay. Alright. <laughs> while, while you warm up there, uh, Sally... Sunday Mom has asked, when is final decision issued and the admission offer sent to the accepted students? Is there a period for acceptance? Uh, domestic students, it's typically December through February, we'll say. International students, it's different because we need to depend on our, our domestic numbers. So those happen in, what, February through March, typically. Yeah. So those are later. Um, so yeah, take some time for internationals. We apologize for that. But it's because um, the state of Florida has, I, I think it's state of Florida that has this rule. It's a there's a certain number of domestic versus international students we can admit to the program so we need to know our domestic numbers at least to some degree before we can do our international numbers so yeah apologize for that but no matter what you should hear back before april for sure because april 15th is the official like university treaty deadline Oof, that's gonna cost him every seven bullets i get hit with to cost me a second Lori wants to know what we're drinking tonight. Um, so we started out with, uh, if you type exclamation point drink, <laughs> it'll actually go in there. Oh, really? Yeah, this is our uh, Ask a Scientist feature. So I'm starting with scotch tonight. Oh, wow. Me too. Or whiskey. Viking Honor spelled with a U, so you know it's classy. Skull! <laughs> Man, so my guest uh, two weeks ago was Matt Gentry, and he, I was like, what do you want me to get? And he's like, oh, I'll bring some. He comes over with uh, this canvas bag filled with four bottles of scotch. So he's like a, a scotch connoisseur. Like, he goes on tours of Ireland and, like, distilleries and stuff like that. So that was a lot of fun. So tonight we're just going with Viking Honor. And some Blue Moon, but yeah, Lori, I have to stay a little bit sober tonight because I don't want to be hungover because tomorrow I have that, uh, the, uh, the awards thing where I have to actually give a presentation. And I'm really nervous for it because I haven't given a talk like this before. I have to cover my research, my, uh, outreach and my, uh, educational aspect. So yeah, it'll be interesting. So staying mildly sober at least. So Texan Space Agency would like us to discuss how we handle rejection and how do we bounce back from it. Man, that's hard. What's our success rate on proposals? Maybe high end 15, 20%? Yeah, I mean, rejection is part of this job. You're yeah. You're not gonna avoid it. Okay. Yeah, it's just always there. Yeah, I think for me, a turning point was when I started having more casual conversations with some of the professors that are so well established and so popular. And then you learn that they get papers rejected all the time. They get grants rejected all the time. And yep. you, you suddenly realize that it's it's not you. That's just the business. Um, even these extremely accomplished, put them on a pedestal, uh, big names in science get rejected quite frequently. Um, so it's part of the job. It's not the best part of the job, obviously, uh, but it nevertheless it's part of it. So knowing that everyone is in the same boat, getting rejected for, for reasons like that is, is comforting, I guess, to some extent. Yeah. 
No, it is. It happens to all of us. I mean, in relation to getting rejected from grad school, though, like, that's a hard one, right? Especially if you had your heart set on grad school. But, I mean, worst case scenario, go get a job in industry, get paid more to work less, and decide a year later if you want to apply again, because you'll have a new letter of recommendation, you'll have experience. I mean, most of us look uh, favorably on industrial experience because you've actually worked in a lab that had consequences <laughs> and responsibilities and timelines and safety. Like, that's really important. So your application will look better as soon as you've, you know, had that industry job. So I think yeah. rebound. Yeah, it's a learning process. Uh, you know, I submitted a grant to the NSF chemistry division four years in a row and got it rejected every time for a different reason. Yep. Uh, <laughs> and you fix one and then you get it yeah, rejected you, for you, slightly different. Like I remember one year they were like praising something and so I didn't change that because they praised that part and yeah. then i resubmitted it the next year and that part got dogged and that was the reason it got rejected and i'm like oh my god that's not fair but yeah. anyway uh you know i ended up scrapping that entire proposal after four tries just i hated looking at it at that point yeah and, and i completely wrote a completely new proposal right out of my ass and it got funded <laughs> So uh, it was a, a learning experience, right? So no, not just that. Like, like the grant and paper rejections is one thing, but the thing we have to accept about research is it is a majority failure, and that's what grad school is like. Most of what you do is not going to work, and you need those little victories to keep you going, because it is hard. It's really hard. Yeah. So it's part of it. I mean, I didn't get into what I thought at the time was my top choice graduate school. I, I'll, I won't name what it was, but I had one that I, I had, I think, the highest hopes for, but I didn't get in. Um, uh, and and uh, um, I ended up going to another university that I was not unhappy to go to, uh, and, and I'm really glad I did, because the advisor that I ended up taking at NC State University was not at any other university. He was only at NC State University, and he changed my life uh, a lot. Uh, in my growth and uh, to scholarship. So, you know, you can look at it as a university that you really want to go to, but really it's more about the advisor that you choose. And, you know, that's, there's good advisors everywhere. Uh, so. All right, do we have any more predictions? We're running out of time. We, we do, we do. Um, let me find it. I'm focusing way too much on this game. This isn't even a viable speed run right now. Oh, you know what? We actually, did we even finish the last one? Oh, no. We did we not. Choose an outcome. The number of schools, grad schools that can apply to. The answer is eight. It was eight. So greater than greater five. Greater than five. How'd that one turn out? Oh, my God. I'm getting wrecked 97 again. 97% said less than five. So it turned out, so somebody oh. somebody hit it big by being the 3% that chose greater than five. Oh, interesting. So seven people said less, one person, can we see who that was? Yeah, if you go down to the, the bottom, the 50, uh, just scroll over that, it'll show a name. Uh, Lori. <laughs> Sorry. <She knows>. <laughs> Lori. <laughs> Unfair. <laughs> yeah. Rage. No, I played the eight graduate programs, and I think it was, man... I'm not going to list them for, for obvious reasons, but yeah, it was eight schools, some local, some, some were long shots, and it was a balance somewhere in between. I think I got accepted to three or four of those. And two of them were because I had done RU programs. <laughs> what? <laughs> you needed a wide berth with that GPA. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, that's the thing. So I had a shitty GPA, but from my RU program, I had a JAX paper as an undergrad. I had an accidental JAX paper. And so that's what carried me through. Not only that, I'm going to relay this, this, this conversation to you guys, because like Mark Thompson is the reason I got into University of Southern California. And so my GPA, my GRE was pretty shitty. My GPA was not great. I didn't get accepted to USC outright, but I contacted Mark Thompson and I said, I'm interested in your research. I want to do photochemistry. I want to work on OLEDs and things like that. And, and I, I reached out to him and he was like, oh yeah, sure. You should come out to visitation weekend. And for them, they, they essentially use that as an interview for me. And later when I got accepted to the program and got into Mark's group, um, there was a senior grad student in the group that was there when Mark had the phone call whether I should be accepted or not. 
And so the phone call essentially as recounted to me was, you know, should we accept the student? And Mark's reply was, yes, we should accept him. He asked all the right questions. And so my GPA and my experience alone wouldn't have been enough to get into USC, but my, um, you know, my then, and well, who ended up being my advisor decided I was acceptable based on our conversation during that time. So yeah. Oh yeah, Jack, Jack, sorry. For those of you not in chemistry, that's Journal of the American Chemical Society. That is like the flagship um, main journal, the highly cited journal of uh, the American Chemical Society. And so Jack's article is like, if you're going for tenure, you want to have a Jack's article when you're going up for that. So yeah, it's I accidentally got it. I went to um, uh, University of Notre Dame. And uh, I worked for Slavi Sivov, and he's like, oh, I have a summer student that has no research experience and doesn't really know anything about chemistry. I'm going to give him a shake and bake chemistry project, which is essentially I'm going to have him mix a bunch of stuff together and grow some crystals. And I accidentally grew this crystal that when you pull a vacuum on it, it pulls out water and it actually changes the crystal structure. And then when you expose it to water, it changes the crystal structure back. And so it was this reversible single positioning of a, of a, a zinc atom based on water content and that turned out to be pretty unique and so my accidental shake and bake chemistry led to a, a pretty high profile article it has over 100 citations now so yeah accidental jacks article is what i call that wish i can get one of those yeah exactly <laughs> actually i have two of those one from my postdoc and one as a grad student or as an undergrad it's kind of fun Eight right. programs. I wonder why they all said less. What about my narc gameplay gave it away? I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe they think that you're a very decisive person. Yeah, and that's that you, true. Like, you, that whittled it down. My, my personality test. All right, we're going to do another prediction. If anyone has suggestions on people we should raid, uh, feel free to throw those in chat. Uh, you have too many. That, is that the answer or is that the question? Nope, that's the answer. Uh, yeah, because your character limited. All right, that's, that should say the same thing. They, they can do that. Uh, and then... Uh, all right, so here comes your next prediction question. About our guest game player Ken Hansen, <laughs> professor. Of yeah, we'll see how well you know me, Cuddle Puppy. <laughs> Wait, Ken used to be able to. Yeah, Ken uh, used I'm old. to be able to. Is it oh. use or used? Two utes. Utes. <laughs> <laughs> Use or oh, can man. used to I, be able to or use to be able to used to I think use use used past use. tense I don't know what's use. a ute <laughs> I had a <laughs> Jeff Kahn law professor on we talked about my cousin Vinny which is a good representative example apparently they they use it in law school as an actual example. <laughs> Ken, what was your track sport? I'm not saying anything. Uh, Kai Schreiner wants to know if we have any photo plastic collaboration papers. We do. Together. We have yeah. we have one. Photomechanical yes. polymers. Polymers that when you shine light on them, they bend. What's really fun about them is if you use vertical polarized light, it bends towards the light. If you use horizontal, it bends away from the light. And so, yeah, that's pretty fun. Um, yeah, Billy and I have a proposal pending on that. I hope it gets fun because I want to revisit that stuff. It's just such a cool... You know, take a molecular phenomenon and translate it to like a bulk property. You don't get a lot of that. I guess you probably do, but we don't. We were mostly molecular. Small molecule. Yeah, my, my graduate work was on chiral optical materials. So chiral oh, yeah. amplification. So polarization of light and stuff like that. Yeah. Amplified by macromolecular chirality. It's kind of cool. I like to revisit that area of research. I, I let go of it as a pre tenure so I wouldn't look like I was doing the same thing as my yeah. advisor. But I still have a passion for that. I think. Yeah. 
your py your your monomers work chiral or how did you make that happen no we we did something called helix sense selective okay. polymerization so we would build a, a, a macromolecule that looked like a coil or a spring so mm -hmm. it would have chirality uh, and then because it was a secondary chirality like a helix it had chiral amplification properties it was pretty cool. So that was a good green card drop right there. Good. But my health We're is low, track. so I'm going to get screwed here. <laughs> Muay Thai. That's fun. Okay. So 21% said that you could do a Rubik's Cube, or use, used to be able to used. do a 79% <laughs> said dunk a basketball, and 79% got it right. Ken was used to be able to dunk. Able to dunk a oh, my God. Car. I'm just terrible at this. This is a Nerf hoop. <laughs> no, a legit 10-foot basketball hoop I was able to, yes, and, and Cuddle Puppy got it right. I was a high jumper in college. And so my best high jump was two meters, which is six foot six and three quarters inches, which is effectively the equivalent to putting your head on the basketball rim. So yeah, I could dunk a basketball pretty easily back in the day. I can also solve a Rubik's Cube, but my best time ever is 43 seconds, so that one doesn't count. Other fun factoid is I was actually a, a black belt in karate, Americanized Taekwondo. And uh, when I was 16 years old, I won a national point fighting championship in uh, Minneapolis, actually. But that was not a long-term career plan, that's for sure. No Wheaties box for me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, I'm gonna die again. I don't think I'm gonna win a round of NARC. I'm not gonna win the war on drugs. Maybe we do one more round? What time is it? I didn't even check. Uh, on the on the actual clock? Yeah, yeah. 10.58. <laughs> I mean, if I survive this, I'll beat it in. Lori is a green belt in Pike one day. Did uh, you know that? I did not know that. That's fun. Kick you in the face. <laughs> that's, that's the goal. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't submit your form. <laughs> I heard Dr. Kenimer trained Olympic track stars. That's true. Trials athlete. The, yeah, that is true. Stefan Britz. Yeah, he went to Rio. Um, long jump? Is that what he was? Triple jump. Triple jump. Triple jump. Yeah. That sounds like insider information. Kai Strider. I must know Kai Strider. <laughs> I heard a rumor. It's on your Wikipedia page. Do I have a Wikipedia I, page? I have no idea. <laughs> I, was, I was making that up. I'd be curious. I mean, it's got to be people's students making those pages, right? <laughs> Covered and mentored Eminem. Yeah, that... That'd be kind of cool. 5-0 in the bottom of the ninth. So this is it. This is the, the game. Yeah, I think they win if they win this, as far as I can remember. Texas is going to be hyped. Uh, I believe that was Dr. Dre that <laughs> discovered and mentored Eminem. But... Heads up, I'm a screamer. <laughs> 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 All right. If you guys have any last-minute questions, you should ask them now, because I have approximately 10 minutes left in this run. I'm going to do this in 9 minutes and 2 seconds. We're going to watch a world record narc run right now. I'm gonna do it. Forgot about Dre. <laughs> oh man, that that definitely dates us. I think when I think of Texas Rangers, I think of Juan Gonzalez. That dude was massive. It was back in the day. So I'm jumping over bullets. Every seven bullets that hits me cost me a second. All right, that's a good start. Let's Thank you, Nightbot, for continually plugging the FSU admissions <laughs> that I've failed at miserably. Oh, no worries. That's why we have Nightbot. It automates it every, I think I set it for 18 minutes. It'll send a message. Any last minute questions or people we should raid? We got to figure out who we're going to go to next. We can teach them about NARC and graduate admissions. Over. We got a boom shakalaka. Oh man, he's a screamer. Boom shakalaka, straight your... out of NBA Jam. Boom shakalaka. I've had at least one guest play NBA Jam. That was a classic. Yes, good game, Rangers fans. 
Good game. That's it? So they're champs? I believe so. Wow. That's exciting. Yes. For, for all those in Texas at this moment. <laughs> Cheers. So do you watch college football? Do you care about FSU? I've watched a little bit more this year because FSU is better. Yeah. Um, Fair weather. Yeah, I mean, I watch NFL, so I'll, I'll see them eventually. It's already good. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Cuddle Puppy wants some vertical jumping Ow. tips. Ugh. Like it, it was a fight, <laughs> man. Cool, uh, clean and jerk. The, the 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 weightlifting, doing cleans and jerks. That's how you get the explosive power. I learned recently, so, so this craziest coincidence. I went back to Bethel University in Minnesota. Well, you know, when I give like uh, recruiting talks and things. I went to Bethel University because one of my high school classmates actually became a professor there. And when I was there, he's like, oh, did you know Larry Herm is now a weightlifting coach here? My high school football coach from middle of nowhere, Minnesota was a weightlifting coach at Bethel. And so I went and talked to him and that was kind of fun. But I learned there that one of their new things in weight training, I don't know how much you did in like sports and stuff, but is they, they do um, explosive power tracking. So it's not just like, can you get the bar up, but like how fast you do it. What's the actual force behind your uh, your weightlifting? Which turns out, I mean, for explosive sports like, you know, football or if you're a sprinter is, is huge, right? So yeah, that's cutting edge technology. Fun factoid, in case anyone was interested. Kai Strider definitely knows me. <laughs> yeah. Why? Well, I, I haven't mentioned the Bears at all, so they know I'm a Bears fan. Yeah. That's fun. <laughs> uh -oh, I think we might be willing to. Oh, this might be. Did you convince bad. someone to order the whole fish? Here, here's my secret. I try to convince everyone to order the whole fish. Oh, no. No, I, I honestly don't remember that. Core memory. That's amazing. Oh, that was probably at uh, table 23, is that what I'm guessing? Or, or was that. Uh, where do we go usually? I don't know. We went to like the uh, corner bar that's downtown the last time. Because we got rid of the faculty time? dinners recently, so this person is probably a fourth year. We better not dox them or anything, but yeah, no, that's awesome. My first year at FSU. Oh, wow. That is a long term FSUer. Okay. Or saying that it is your first year student at FSU. Mm. Oh, interesting. I don't think I went to dinner with anyone last year. Or the whole fish. I mean, you can't go wrong with the whole yeah, fish. Yeah, I was going to say, what are you not going to eat it? It's, you like. Yeah, it's, you're billing it to FSU chemistry. Who cares? <laughs> Your first year at FSU. Well, I don't think I missed any questions, which is good, except for the one that Lori gave me a yeah. karate kick. Like, I had green belt. Lori, kudos to you, your commitment to Ask a Scientist Gaming streaming. We actually had a lot of visitors tonight, so that was fun. Yeah. Did you beat it? <laughs> I'm still going. I have about four minutes left in this run. So I apologize for taking additional time, but this became a vendetta. I have to beat this. I have to at least survive to Mr. Big, right? It'd be disrespectful not to. I mean, you got to. Yeah. So, Justin, I apologize for taking additional time. Gosh. Thank you for hosting, by the way. This Charging is overtime. You're not even on the graduate admissions committee anymore. No. I'm on the graduate advising committee now. Which is a separate nightmare. It's rotated around. Oh, come on. So this is it. The speed run's dead. If anybody's wondering what the difference is, graduate admissions gets you here. Graduate advising, you know, helps you when you're here. So we have committees for various purposes. Ultimately, the goal is to make your experience fair and pleasant. Yeah. yeah. And they're the ones that propose rule changes and strategies i think your committee is the one that uh abandoned the gre or advocated for it first yeah. so graduate advising is the one that makes that decision also deciding to go to five classes instead of six which was a major change yes yes still debatable in certain areas but yeah um, i mean that's fair you can't so you know a lot of times with this job it's about making the least amount of people unhappy rather than making everyone happy and that's just life yep um 
but we also decide on awards, right? So like uh, we've got we've got a quite a healthy amount of awards that you can win as a graduate student. Um, and a lot of them are dependent upon if you're this year or that year or at the end. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and actually one of our new colleagues, Wen Zhu, put together a really nice pamphlet to give out to the incoming students that yeah. have all these awards on them. Because I think for a while people weren't really sure what, what was out there. Um, yeah, that's a really cool... Like, and she gave a talk on it, too, which is fun. Oh, great. Good yeah. Point. Yeah. No, because we need to be... I mean, it's a war of attrition. Like, those of you... Uh, we talked about rejections earlier. And, I mean, you're going to get rejected. Just submit 100 things, right? It's war of attrition. I mean, we, we've had awards where one person was nominated. Yeah. And that should never be the case. And usually it's just because people either didn't know about the award or they forgot or something. But we, we, should, we should have healthy competition for all awards. And mm -hmm. That's something that uh, I, I've been working on a little bit since joining this. So. So it goes. So it goes. <laughs> Core memory. I love that that's a descriptor. That's from, uh, what, what movie was that? It was the personalities with joy and anger and... Oh, uh... What is that called? It's a Disney, like a yeah, yeah. Pixar movie. Yep. Um, I don't know. Emotion? I don't know, is that Inside Out? Is that the name of it? Someone would know. Tex and I know Someone, you know. I bet it's going to come up around the chat. Inside Out. Yep. There we yeah. go. No, that's fun. I, I like the idea of core memory. Fun factoid, the, the family in that moved from uh, Minnesota to San Francisco. Texan... We, we did you get Texan Space Agency on this show? <laughs> yeah. He's got a lot of interesting well, I, I, I told him I have a standing offer. If he comes to Tallahassee. <laughs> So he's a, I don't know if you're familiar or remember, he's hes actually a blacksmith or streams blacksmithing. Kind oh, of fun. Yeah. That is an area that I've always been fascinating with. Like if I could find a way to just do that yeah. introductory course to that, that would be so much fun. I have a property in North Georgia maybe on the way. That's fun. Yeah. Uh, Can yep. we do some blacksmithing classes also? All right, okay. here we go, Mr. Big. As long as I survive this, we're okay. Here we go. Shoot it! I missed it. Oh, washed up, Ken. Wow, I'm missing this rocket. There we go. For those that are not familiar, he is spinning tongues. <laughs> exactly. And Mr. then you go to phase two. Infinite tongues, it seems. So this is the part everyone struggles with. You just gotta know exactly where to be on the screen and then when to pull the trigger and then you can get the vertebrae. All right. Wow. Yeah. Was that a win? Yep. That is it. I'm 59. I don't think that's gonna cut it. <laughs> no, it's not. Still a, not a bad time, but not perfect. So now for civil forfeiture the level. Any suggestions on who we should raid? Any ideas? Let's raid someone doing that new Mario. <laughs> Let's find a Mario Wonder player. All right, here we go. Let's see what our time is. 10.24. Not bad. We're going to count it. You have for recruitment stream? No. <laughs> With that gameplay, maybe the answer is good. So, Ken, 10 minutes and 24 seconds would put you at seventh place all time. Yeah, the seventh best speed run according to leaderboard. That's not bad. Not bad. Yeah, not we'll bad. take that. It's not super pit pro, but it's... it's, it's... <laughs> <laughs> all right, well... Does anyone have suggestions on people we should <laughs> raid? have recruitment stream? <laughs> that would be awesome. Oh, man. All right, well... That closes out the night. Um, Justin, thank you for hosting. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you all for swinging by. It's been fun answering questions, talking a little science, talking about emissions, giving advice. Uh, especially the chat has a lot of insights and comments on things. It's been great. Uh, Justin, thank you for doing this. Uh, every year I, I throw you into this pool and you have to deal with like four different screens. We apologize for early in the stream where we had some technical issues. We had to actually stop the stream, restart the computer, and then um, yeah, set up everything again. So that was a bit of a battle but uh, it was pretty fun um yeah um any parting words for the audience anything you want to share no it's been a pleasure 
Um, I'll, like I always say, if you have any additional questions, you can always email me or Ken. Can't promise I'll get back to you right away, but um, uh, you know, we're, we're we enjoy answering questions. So. Yeah, we're relatively friendly individuals, and I just put the link in there. If you guys are interested in applying for FSU Chemistry, click on that, do your application, submit it. I think our application fee is like $35. If you get in as a domestic student, you get to fly out to FSU and come visit us and see us in person. Um, so yeah, you can meet the world-famous Ask a Scientist Gaming <laughs> streamer and host. <laughs> so uh, come come join us at some point and, and visit. Um, but yeah, that's it for this stream. Um, stick around. We're going to raid somebody. We'll find either Super Mario Wonder or we'll find somebody doing science-related things. Um, but yeah, as usual, we have a guest every, every two weeks, and so our next guest will be Karen McGinnis. Uh, she does uh, genomics and ep epigenetics, particularly with maize or corn and how they express genes. It's uh, Apparently, corn is a really nice nice thing to study in terms of uh, evolutionary biology and how you can control genetics and epigenetics and things like that. So Karen will be by, by. I think she's going to play the original Super Mario Brothers. So that should be a pretty fun uh, contrast to our, us playing Super Mario um, earlier. <laughs> That's what my dad does. That's awesome. So fun overlap there. Yeah. Join us again in two weeks. That'll be, uh, what is that? November 15th will be the next train. So, um, yeah, it's been a pleasure. Stick around. We're going to raid somebody at some point. Um, but yeah, we'll see you guys again in two weeks.